This course will get you a high paying job offer and this is not just another machine learning course. I have grabbed my first data center internship which is at a US based startup and whose pay was 2x more than what Google India's pay to the software engineers. And I've got several offers from several international companies across US, UK, Germany and etc. And people often think how it is possible to get that level of competitive pay just by living in India and working on a remote job. What I used to do, I used to add a creamy layer on top of my all the take home challenges and the projects and the creamy layer was MLOps. And this course is about to add a creamy layer on top of your project and take home challenges. This course will teach you fundamentals of MLOps as well as we'll be having one end to end project which will involve from data ingestion to deployment using several state of the art tools like MLflow, ZenML and etc. MLOps is completely new field and there are very less resources around it. And this is a gold mine and a game changer in the ML community. If you do this with the dedication and the patience, you will be able to succeed in learning about MLOps and then you'll be also getting the international pace or whatsoever job offer which you want in your hands. But but wait, who am I? I'm lead data scientist at Triplate. I've led several products in creators economy. Along with it, I have worked as an MLOps engineer as one of the fastest growing MLOps framework, which is ZenML. And I have experience in working as a data scientist at Artifact and building large scale NLP products before even GPT was launched. And hopefully by all of this experience, I'm the right guy to teach you about MLOps. All the required links and everything resources is listed down in a description on box below. You can go ahead and check that out. Hey everyone, welcome to the another lecture on MLOps. We'll be starting off with giving you a slight introduction to MLOps. Also, I'll make you aware with the terminologies of MLOps, which is very important for you to understand the later content of this course, as well as we'll also make sure that you understand the basic things like pipeline steps, which is a library which we'll be using out there. But before that, we'll make sure to, that you understand why there's a need of MLOps, or like what are the stages in MLOps and etc, etc. So let's get started with this uh, lecture. So the first thing first, so the first thing first out is um, about the, the, the growth of data is increasing. There's the exponential growth of data and the importance of artificial intelligence is also has also increased over time. Now, the data has increased, but now we need to make sure that we utilize that data in a right way and in a positive way, right? So that's where it comes, that, that, that's where we, we have artificial intelligence, right? So now you might be thinking that, okay, fair enough, we can just build a prediction model on top of it. But you should understand that machine learning is not just about building model. Why I say this, why I say this, because your ML code or whatever machine learning model is just 20% of your whole machine learning project or a whole um, business problem, right? There's a lot of things which comes in, into that place and your machine learning code is just 20% out of the whole set of things. So I hope you, I, I will, I'll prove you why, why there's a 20% of ML code throughout this video. And it's, ML in the industry is more than the training models. It is validated by Chip Huen, who is one of the ex experts in MLOps. And it is also uh, validated by Elon Musk, who just said, yeah, it's like machine learning engineering is just 10% machine learning and 90% engineering. And that's something really interesting to worry about. And you might be thinking that every other course is online, teaches only about machine learning engineering, which is a mach building machine learning models, but nobody teaches about the engineering part of it, right? And you might be thinking it might be some data structures and algorithms, or it might be some design patterns or etc. Of course, yes, it has some factors, but a lot more than these DSA and stuff, which we'll explore throughout the course through our project. So, we, uh, in our typical ML team, uh, in our corporate, we have the following uh, people who are actually responsible for doing X amount of tasks. So your data scientists discover the raw data, develop features and train models, right? And data engineer who productionize the data pipeline. We'll talk about the term uh, productionized in a bit, but data pipeline is like where the data is coming from and then making it on a large scale. Right? And then we have a ML engineer who sits on front to deploy the model, right? So that it can be used by users by you. We'll talk about what does deployment mean in just some seconds. 
And then we integrate the service into the into your website or application and then you have to monitor it. We'll talk about each and every steps in great detail. And then you have a lawyer who, who can just ask you, we, we, we should ask question to them, can I use this data for my model? Yes or no? And and I'm pretty much sure that you might be not be aware of it. Any of the any of the red uh, lines over here, I'll make sure that you understand each of the things like training models, productionizing, deployment, integrating, monitoring, and all the stuff throughout this inter introductory lecture. The reason why I'm doing this introductory lecture to make sure that you understand each and every bit in the project which will use which will make use of like terminologies which will make use of it there. So what data science actually sees, you might be thinking about, okay, fair enough. You have pd.readcsv, you read the data, you fit, and then some, some happens. And then you simply, uh, and then you also have the classifier. You also fit that. And then you dot predict and dot score, right? That's what you see, right? But do you really think that uh, by, by writing three, these three lines of code, people will get your job? Of course not, right? And the main focus, 90% focus should be on engineering. And what engineering sees is much more uh, very scary than what data science sees. So ML in production, you might, if you're a bit aware even about how does it goes, etc. The first step is you collect the data, you train the model, and then deploy the model in production. What does deployment mean? So let's talk about a little bit about de deployment so that you understand in a bit. However, I recommend if you want to understand deployment much more in great detail, we'll have uh, more sections on afterwards to actually understand what does deployment mean over here. So deployment means that you once you once you have the trained model, for example, but let's take an example you were you're working on a email spam detection project right and the model is currently is in a local server right is in a machine how can you use that and integrate into that gmail right so that that we can use that model to make predictions for the users who, who are who are whom for for whom we are making this model for right and that's where deployment comes in right deployment is about that you have to make your uh, local model available to the lot of people to the users for which you're building the model for right that's what deployment means you have to deploy the model uh, online and, and and we'll see we'll, we'll talk about it on deployment in very great detail in some time but you might be thinking that this is the process but what is actually it looks like so basically what happens that first of all, you collect the data, you train the model, and then you deploy the model. Now, once your model is deployed, you again go back and collecting the data and then training the model. And this loops goes in environment. But how does you, how, how can we say, how can we say that that okay how the what's the loop is about you might be having several questions what is a loop what is a production environment and a lot of things out here so let's talk about in great detail about what does a loop means and what is the production environment is so i'll take a very very simple example of uh, this image right so for assume that you have the, you had the collected the data and then you had the trained the model and then you deployed the code right so assume that assume that it is deployed in production your spam detection uh, spam, spam detection system and is being used right now what happens that you changed your model you changed your machine learning algorithm from logistic regression to naive base that right? you change your ml algorithm right so you have to you, you have to reiterate go back to the model and then and then uh, whatever is changed you have to again to deploy that changed model which is update the model right which is one case is different model needed or ml algorithm changes right another another point is for example you're building some spam reduction project you might have trained it on a on a on a data set which uh, which is which which might be unupdated right or a new data arrives right for example your uh, hackers or spammers change their strategy of sending spam emails right so so the, the the data changes and your model should be able to identify the new patterns which the spammers are following right so what happens that if any data changes happen it retrains the model so first of all data again new data comes in retrains the model and then deploy it that's why we call it in the loop in a production environment it is a never-ending process you know it is a never-ending process 
a deployment goes in production right and it trains the model it it sorry uh it first of all collects the data trains the model and deployment goes in production what if if your model changes model changes if the model changes you again you have to go back and then push it again or if new data arrives you have to go back to data collection and then push it again i hope this really makes sense if it does not don't worry we'll have a lot of examples to study more I'll take, I'll give one possible scenario of this production when ML algorithm changes or of the about the loop in a product, production environment. So one possible scenario of going back, of, go, of going back is about model performance starts to decay, right? So once you train the model, you deploy it after a certain period of time, your model starts to decay. So let's take an example of a fraud detection example. So assume you have a trained your model for fraud detection. And let's say you have deployed it as well. And you see your model is giving incorrect prediction, right? So it most probably happened that your frauders changed the strategy or patterns to fraud, right? The, 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 the patterns which a machine learning algorithm has learned has changed. So you need to recollect the data and retrain the model, which means go back and then do it again. And it may happen after some, some time again, hackers change the strategy. Right. So this is what the model performance starts to decay. Then you have to go back into the loop and then uh, retrain and redeploy the model. Another scenario can be we might need to reformulate the problem as it's difficult to get gather data, more data as we need. So you reformulate other problems. Violation of assumption which we made during training. So basically what happens, basically what happens when you train the model, we have certain assumption for our input data that the, the input data will be in certain range or input data will will will, will be there are a lot of assumptions which comes into this place so if the while if the assumption changes if the, the assumption changes in, which we had in a training data we might need to uh, reformulate the assumption or maybe go go back to this and have those uh, accommodate the assumption which are being violated or simply the business objective changes and basically you need to restart again. So a lot of things which comes into that place, which can be of a loop and it is never ending process. You have to have continuously uh, seeing your model, monitoring your model and stuff. So ML production, which is data affects the output system and it's very hard to make it reliable. When deploying model, you're retraining and then collecting and then the loop is very, very hard to make it reliable. And that's where MLOps comes in place. MLOps is a set of practices. It is not some library or it is a tool. It is a set of practices that aims to deploy and maintain machine learning models in production reliably and efficiently. So to make sure that if there's anything changes in the data, it retrains the model. I'm just taking one for one or two examples. It retrains the model. If the assumptions are violated, it again goes back. So we have to make it reliable, productionized, which is which is happening at a large scale. So uh, the term MLOps is like the extension of the DevOps methodology to include machine learning and data science assets at the first class citizens within the DevOps ecology. I'm pretty, I'm pretty much sure that you, that you might be a bit uh, uncomfortable with this. So let's try to think about in another way. Okay. I'll tell you a very simple example of MLOps. So assume that you are, you're given a, a, a game to build a beautiful city, right? Now you just build the beauty. Now, if you build a beautiful building in that city, is that helpful? Then just write yes or no. Is that helpful? Yes or no. Building a beautiful city in that build, uh, in that city is not at all good thing because it needs the electrical connectivity. It needs the maintenance. It needs the security systems. It needs the connection to the roads and the railways and a lot of things which comes into the place. Right. So a single building is like a is like a model. You have to connect it. You have to securitize it or you have to monitor it. A lot of things which comes into that place for making the fully functional city and companies wants what companies wants the full standalone cities, not a full building. Right. And that's where the people are not getting jobs. It's only because they are only focusing on building that building, not the whole city. And MLOps is a way to building that full city, which is required. So we really talked about a deployment, but you might be thinking it's very, very easy to deploy the model in production. But let me tell you that the trouble begins after deployment. So you might be worrying about why so. 
I'll tell you what are the some of the things which needs to be taken care of. The first one is accounting for latency. So what is latency? Latency is about that that you might be shocked by the statistics that 53% of the visitors are abandoned if a mobile site takes more than three seconds to load. So for example, if your sites take more than three seconds to load, 53% of the people will ab abandon the site. And you know why? And I'll tell you why. It's because, for example, you have you, you, you might have deployed a 120 billion parameters model or a very large model. Do you think that model will give prediction in less than three seconds? <laughs> that's, that's, that's really hard, right? And latency is one of the biggest problem, right? And if visitors are not viewing your, viewing your model on a website, they're most likely not is engaged with the brand and they're most likely not buy your product or utilize that product right so this is one of the woes another one is that fairness right so for example you deployed your model right so basically what happened that microsoft created a twitter bot to learn from users and you know it became the racist it started supporting the various bad ideologies after deployment they thought that this will be so good and it was taken down by microsoft in just some hours it was against feminism it was sorry <laughs> it was against um I'll, I'll not take any names it was against x amount of thing right which was which was which was so racist out there that's what they had to take it down in matter of some 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 hours after deployment they thought that this will be good but but eventually it learned very bad things and then need to retrain it but however it never gone into production from from them another one is lack of explainability and audibility it's very hard to explain the prediction right um and 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 we also ha also have to make sure that it is authentic enough to trust this right and that's why there are several rules and guidelines which are coming by and by again to make sure from the EU, eu to make sure that we fit some of the principles of ai and it is painfully slow i'll tell you 36 but there, there, there was a basic you know um the survey conducted from a set of data scientists about how much time they spend in deploying and machine learning models. 36% of them said, said that they spend a quarter of their time, which is 36% of their time deploying machine learning models. Right. And, and, and this is so, you know, um, um, which is, and, and, and they're like, more 36 percent of same quarter to half of the time we're deploying and 20 percent half to three quarters and seven percent in more than three quarters it is very very slow and you might be noticing why it is slow and there's a lot of things which will face when 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 we are building project and we might be very surprised so to see that i'll be i'll be so correct to you i'll be so truthful to you that when i was building projects for this course i actually spent my <laughs> whole week in deploying models because it's painfully slow and i and you and you might be shocked that i built the whole ml model data processing in just two days that's it and spending four hours but a freaking whole week in deploying it <laughs> so this is uh this is one of the other things so yeah so um so i'll talk about the model centric and a data centric in a bit but what exactly model centric and data centric means so model centric means that you are you want to improve the model while do not changing any data so you fix the data so you have x amount of data you fix it and then you iteratively improve your code or model by tuning it some parameters and expect your model to perform well or in data centric what you do you hold the model fixed and then you keep on iteratively improving the data and a lot of work is in this model centric only few of the work is in data centric so i suggest for you all to focus on data centric um, more probably to focus on data more have still the model but yeah it's to totally upon your choice this is also said by andrew dunn which is again the very uh pioneer which is one of one of one of my instructor too is very nice in what he teaches and i think that his ideologies i, I was in a, one of the webinar of him and actually he told about this model centric and data, data centric and which which we really experience in our day-to-day -day life as a data scientist so uh, let's get started with talking about uh, the whole process of mlops and what does it include so the first thing to worry about it what is the business problem we want to solve 
So what is the business problem we really want to solve? That's the first question to start off. So any MLOps project, any machine learning product, which we have to start first to worry about not about what pro what what exactly ML thing which you have to solve. What a business problem which you want to solve. So in that business problem you want to solve, you know, we have to take care of several things out there. The first is the cost of wrong predictions. So I'll tell you a very basic example. We'll, we'll have a basic example. So let's take an example. What we want to do, we want to predict, we, we want to we want to forecast, you know, we want to forecast our retails. For example, what happens in a company that sometimes because of the uh, wrong estimation, sometimes what happens, there might be overstock of a particular product, which leads to wasted of resources and their understock, which leads to again, the revenue loss. So in both cases, understock or overstock of your, um, of your resource of of your products is being the problem in a retail company so you notice you you want to really solve that so the first one is what is the cost of wrong predictions if we actually if if our model gives if we actually don't estimate the right thing the cost of wrong prediction is quite high overstock means having more stock of your products leads to wasted resources and possible write-offs for unsold products and understock which means which is missed sales opportunity and unsatisfied customers because they're not able to get the things on time and both of them has the quite high quite high uh, costs because one at one point you're if you are overstock you wastage resources and one point it is like miss sales opportunity so we have to worry about and if we solve this problem we'll fix overstock and understock problems so let's break down the process of sale forecasting processes so basically in this sale for forecasting process you decompose the process of sale for, for forecasting into component task see 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 just notice that we haven't reached to our ml thing right away we first of all talking about the problem which you want to solve right and then dividing the problem then right so now is a sales forecasting problem we are dividing the problem into several things first is data gathering second historical sales analysis market trend analysis and actual forecasting so what does data gathering mean getting the required amount of data which we need analysis of the past right what is the trend of the market and the last one is actual forecasting so what do you do you you actually data gathering is something which is pretty easy right um, not pretty easy i would say it is a, it is it is something which so let's worry about what things can be solved in ml in this case and also will will it return high roi right high uh, return of our time right which we devote in this so of course we can have uh, data gathering is, has all the equal importance but what eventually we could solve for using ml is this actual forecasting to actually estimate what will be the number of a pro stocks which which we should have in a certain time period and we can actually use this AI ML in this actual forecasting task where it could analyze the past sales data and market trends right to predict future sales with higher accuracy than whatever traditional methods they're using so now you might have noticed that now after dividing it into, it into the components we understand actual forecasting is the one which we should solve for by by utilizing the past data and the market trends and the roi could be estimated by potential increase and a decrease in sales wastage due to improve forecast for example if your forecasting is good you will be actually noticing that your that there's a decrease in a wasted resources which means eventually it's helping right and then what you do you actually worry about what what will the cost of developing and maintaining the solution so if your wasted resources are decreasing a lot so you might focus on building this aml solution of it and then you have to prioritize it. In this case, you have to prioritize the implementation, which is the actual forecasting in this case. Okay, cool. So we'll talk about structuring in our project. As of now, I'm just leaving this slide. So there's a machine learning canvas, which usually you have to really worry about while building a project or solving a business problem using machine learning. The first one is a value proposition. Right. So first of all, we have to define the value proposition. What is this importance? Define the problem, the importance of the problem and the, what who will be our end user. Right. So basically you are to for you, you need to understand for who we need 
a product service, this product will be benefiting. Joffrey Moore value proposition position statement, which means for target customer who need our product slash service is a product category, category that benefits. Basically, we have to make sure we have to make sure the problem importance is so high, right? To proceed with the uh, solving for the problem. Another one is we have data sources from where we should identify potential data sources. And it can be including some internal databases or APIs or open data sets and etc. which comes into that place. We should also consider hidden costs such as data st storage, purchasing external data and etc. which comes into that place. So basically, this is the second se second step. Third step is what will be the production task? Will it is a supervised or unsupervised problem or anomaly detection, classification, regression or ranking problem? So just worry about what will be my input? What will be my output? What will be the degree of model complexity? Right. This will give you more clear, com uh, clear clarity before building the before going an actual coding part. Then next step is feature engineering. So basically, you have to interact with the domain experts. For example, you might be working, in, you, you, you might be building something really good in thing in healthcare space, but you're not a MBBS doctor, right? You actually need to have the MBBS doctor to actually get more information to understand the terminologies and actually make uh, more information, extract more information from the available data sources which we get. That's where feature engineering comes into comes into this place. Offline evaluation, which means you set up some matrix to evaluate your system before pushing it to the de deployment. Pre deployment means using the model by your own and understanding the prediction errors and what will the cost of wrong predictions. And then using predictions to make decisions. How will the end user interact with the interact with the predictions? Will it will it involve any hidden cost, which can be an, in human intervention, and a lot of things which comes into that place. And at last, we collect the new data. We, we keep on collect, collecting new data for model retraining and preventing model decaying per performance. We also consider cost for data collection and the role of human intervention in data labeling because it's very, very important for having good labelers in the data to actually for, for, for actually helping models to extract patterns from it. And then you have deciding frequency of model retraining and associated hidden costs for, for how many times we'll retrain a model at what interval and as well as if there's any changes in the tech stack which you have to worry about. And then what you do, you set up matrix to track system. You have to monitor your model once your model is deployed. You know, you have to deploy it so that, so that, for example, in spam reduction, you have to, uh, you have to keep on check. You have to have some matrix to keep on check whether your model is giving the wrong predictions or not. That's the monitoring part. And also identify situations where AIML may not be the best solution. It can be some subtasks of it where you actually worry about something outside of AIML, right? Because it's very, very important to understand if we can solve it without AIML because it's very um, hard as well as the, the cost of implementing AIML solution is pretty much big. And also, so so that's pretty, that's pretty much about um, what exactly we need to worry about uh, in ML, whole MLOps procedure. So there are three things which comes into into the workflow of building uh, workflow of building the machine learning based software development. That there are three main artifacts in building ML based software. The first one is data. Second one is machine learning model, and third one is code. And three main phases, which which is engineering, data engineering, ML model engineering, and code engineering. So let's talk about each step by step. So data engineering is like you have to collect the data, acquire the data, and prepare the data accordingly, right? What is uh, and then also uh, make sure that there are certain things which is which we have to make sure in this. So the pipeline of data engineering here how it goes. Pipeline means step by step procedure to go ahead. Right. First of all, you ingest the data and the data which was ingested, you explore and validate the data that is coming from a uh, true space as well as explore it to understand the data. You format and clean the data. You label the data if it is a supervised learning problem and you divide the data into training validation test sets so, so that that can be used for training the models. I'm assuming that you already know about training and validation and all those things which is already there. I'm not here over here to explain you ML things. I'm over here to explain you things which really matters. 
So the next step is model engineering. So the core of ML workflow is writing and executing ML algorithms. The pipeline here is like this. You train the model, you evaluate the model, validate the model, which is pre-deployment. So that makes sure that your model is working pretty well. You test the model, right? Using the unknown, unseen data set, which is the unseen uh, samples, which your model has never seen. And then you package the model so that business can be used accordingly. It can be .pkl file or any such, you know, uh, models. And at last but not the least, you have you deploy the model. You serve the model in a production environment. You monitor so that it's 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 going well, and then you record and then also log it so that for every infant for every prediction it is making, so that we can go back if there's anything goes wrong. So I hope that you understand these three things pipelines. We'll go into the greater detail when we actually do this process. We'll implement it live over there so that you could see pretty much easily. And we'll use ZenML to develop, execute, and manage our machine learning systems. So I'll talk about uh, pipelines and steps in pretty much small detail, and we'll eventually go to projects because I think that it's pretty uh, long video. So we'll just try to talk in greater detail uh, later on. As of now, let's talk about what are pipelines. So ZenML follows a pipeline-based approach. So don't worry about the ZenML thing as of now. We'll, we'll come to that, what exactly it is later on. But currently, well, let's talk about pipelines and steps. So ZenML follows a pipeline-based approach to organize machine learning workflows. It can be methods to promote efficiency, repetitively, sorry, repetitively, and collaboration in your projects. So say, for example, uh, so what is pipeline? It's like a movie production process. A pipeline is a high level workflow that organizes a series of tasks to create a final product. In the context of a movie production process, it can be of script writing, casting, filming, editing, and distribution. Casting depends on script writing, filming depends on casting, editing depends on filming, and distribution depends on editing. Everything is interrelated and everything is step by step. Not you, you, you can't do scripting and then editing, right? So similarly in ZenML, your pipeline represents a complete ML workflow and each step over there, it can be involved. A step can be data preparation, feature and another step feature engineering. So feature engineering can only be done if the, if the previous step is completed and then train the model to evaluate and deploy it. So here's a very basic basic example over here. So basically, you you you, you actually first of all, uh, step one, which is the prepare the data. You have some MLI where you load the data, which is using the step decorator. You have another function which is using the step decorator. You f uh, train the model, you evaluate the model, which is editing, and then you deploy the model, which is distribution. Now you combine all these steps into a pipeline. Right? You have the data, you give the input data, which is using a pipeline decorator, you give it to the feature engineering, and then you give the features to the model, and then you give the models to the, for the evaluation to evaluate, and then you deploy the model, and then you run this whole pipeline. So it's not step by step to reach and give you the trained model. So there are a lot of things, a lot of benefits of it, which we'll discuss throughout the course right so in the next set of lectures i'll make sure to in introduce you to bit of bit of colab notebooks to make sure that you're aware about basic functionality of xenomel so that we could actually use this in our process and then we'll be go on building our first project of mlops so let's get started uh, with this uh, our first mlops project Hey everyone, welcome back to the new video on MLOps course. So basically today what I want to do is I want to make you familiar with core and the fundamentals of ZenML because it's very, very important to understand what are the core concepts of ZenML to actually start on building several projects using ZenML. ZenML is an open source library for building uh, full stack MLOps applications. And the reason why I want to use this ZenML because I personally worked over there for, uh, for about six to seven months over there and I worked there with their core team. And actually this is super simple to use that's why I want to use ZenML. You can use several other orchestrators which are available in the market. However, the most easiest one with the best ones uh, is ZenML. So that's why I want to use ZenML. Uh, however, uh, you might face several other problems, uh, but you, there's always a community which you, where you can interact and uh, so re resolve your doubts. So let's get started with ML pipelines with ZenML. And today, uh, this is the Coco Lab notebook from ZenBytes, which ZenML, ZenML team has already built for us. And over there, this the the, the, the 
Zen Bytes, what they want to do from these kind of collabs, they want to teach you the core concepts. So I want to utilize these and then uh, record a videos on top of it to actually make you understand some of the core concepts of ZenML. So let's get started. Um, and also we'll be doing projects. Don't worry. This is just for core understanding because as we say, the core is the power. So let's get started uh, with this notebook. So uh, first of all, what, what we will do, we will install the, the ZenML server, which is the ZenML server, which is very important for us to install. Uh, you can, this is a command line, uh, com command, which you have to paste on a terminal. If you're using VS code, however, you can just get started with Colab. will when, when we'll go to projects, you can actually, actually see the way I'm doing over there. We will, will also make use of scikit-learn because I want to show you the demo. That's why I want to train a very simple model over here and uh, pi parsing, which is important for Colab. And then we do it for simple things which is needed however i have already did it so you don't need to uh, you you only need to do i don't need to do because it takes a bit of time to download so uh and the next uh you need ng doc account if you want to see the visualizations and all the stuff which is pretty easy you only need ng doc account for colab you don't need ng doc account for something if you're doing uh for on vs code or simple python code you, you'll be easily having access to that however for, for colab you need ng doc you can actually have it i have a coupon code over here it will i you can actually i will hide it i'm so sorry for it i'll hide it or you can just uh, have your own ng doc token as well Cool. So, uh, and over here, you this is just for collab setup. This is not for uh, any uh, things you, which you have to learn. So, uh, what what we will do is, uh, will you you might be familiar as it says that you might be familiar with Scikit-Learn, PyTorch, or TensorFlow. So, as I said, the ML pipeline is simply an extension which includes this step by step. As I as I told the example of a what I, I told the example of a movie production process. So, and and in that movie production, you have scripting, casting, editing, and all those things. Those are steps which are interconnected with each other, right? So, the 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 reason why we use pipelines is because of the following reasons. The first one is we can easily rerun all our work, not just the model, right? So, basically. You you run each and everything from the starting sort of which which helps to uh, eliminate any bugs also make our models easier to reproduce second one is that for every pipeline you run you have for 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 every time you run you have the you have you can easily track the previous previous run in this in these kind of pipelines for example you run the code one time and then you run the second times and usually you don't have the access to the previous run so basically using pipelines you can have the access to every runs and it can be tracked as well and then you can comp then you can use for several purpose for for example comparing two different versions of the models right and also if the entire pipeline is coded up we can automate many operational tasks like retraining redeployment and all those things which is needed via CICD workflows will uh, don't worry about if you did, didn't understood this line when we'll actually do one simple uh, project or uh, one simple project you will see if any things changes on the data how we how actually pipeline help us to um, this uh, redeploy or retrain our model Okay, cool. So let's get started with the ZenML. So first of all, you need to have the you need to have the ZenML library installed. First of all, what we will do, we'll remove any existing files over there, and then initialize a ZenML repository, which is very important. Uh, which is very important. Which is the first step whenever you use ZenML library. So it initializes your ZenML in each, uh, in your current uh, directory. So currently, you can just use ZenML in each to initialize it. And this happens. Uh, this uh, exclamation mark shows that we are dealing with terminal commands. So now, so now I'll show you what we exactly do. For basically, I'm going to train. I want. I want to train a class a Scikit-Learn SVC, which is a support vector machine sub, su, support vector classifier. I want to train a support vector machine classifier to classify images of handwritten digits. So basically, we we will do the handwritten digit recognition using a support vector machine. So over there, we have there. There is there are several images and each image is either 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, all the way around to the 10. So basically, you want to classify the numbers, the images, uh, handwritten the digits uh, based on 0, 0 to 10 uh, numbers. So let's get started with it. Uh, if you are not sure about what is handwritten digit recognition, you can first sure take a look at online what is the problem is about. So basically, what what we will do, we'll we load the model, we will train the model, we'll trust the model uh, on that, and then we'll see the accuracy. However, this is not the right thing to do. Okay, this is just for practicing. This this can be thousand x more complex than this is very basic version of anything, right? This is just a dummy dummy thing just to showcase you. So basically, you you load the digits. So 
load digits will load the data set from sklearn data set so basically we'll use the sklearn data sets to load the digits and then what we will do uh, and then we'll reshape it so that we'll just do the little bit of processing and once the processing is done we'll divide our data sets into x train x test y train and y test the reason why we divide it because so that we can train our model on x train and y train and then we can test our model on testing however again i'll say that machine learning algorithm coding is thousands x much more better than this we teach in our core machine learning course uh, which is if you if you actually see the core, core machine learning course you'll see what is this bro so yeah just this is just for dumb example don't take inspiration from machine learning uh algorithm over here right and then you simply train test split and then you have the support vector classifier and then you fit the model and then you evaluate the model okay pretty simple now what now this is i and then you run it you get the test accuracy now how can we run this into how can we divide this into experiment into pipelines so what we will do as we have the Z Z NML init which is a zenml repository we'll create our first pipeline the first pipeline will have the following components and that it will import it will train it will evaluate the model okay so our three distinct steps in this example loading of the data training of the model and evaluating the model right you can simply use we can we'll, uh, we'll we will simply make different different functions for different different components over here so first of all we'll make you'll make use of add rate step operator which you can simply import from zenml and then what you will have to do you'll the import the importer importer does this does not takes anything this returns right this is called type set the, the the thing which we have to return over here so the so basically the importer will load the digit will reshape it will uh, train to split and then return x train x test y train by test the reason why we have to actually write over there what it's actually returning is for several reasons which happens behind zenml behind the scenes because uh, this svc trainer should know what type of input it is coming to me because as we trainer will get x train and y train right so they should know what type of so that to verify the type of the data types which importer is sending and svc is getting we need to actually state that this is something which is it is going to return this is also helpful in readability also it happens it also helps in the back end of the system which is annotated and then np dot and the array this is the x train will return the x train the type of that is a uh, numpy array x test type of that is uh, and the array so this is a formal annotated which will annotate our outputs right and then we have another step which is svc trainer right we which we again decorated with that the red step and then it returns as we see over it takes x train which we say that it is a numpy array y train it is also a numpy array and it returns the classifier it, it returns the classifier right so basically it returns the classifier which means that we train the model and it returns the classifier so basically you you, you can import classifier mix in from sklearn base which says that this is the whatever it whatever it is the type it will just uh, make make the type so it, it will be a uh, classifier mixing it will be a mix of classifiers so you, you can easily search online about classifier mixing if you're unconfused about what type of data type is this this is just the svc classifier a data type you can also write svc over there uh, by identifying the type of this model the next step is it will take the input as the x test and y test and the model and the model type would be classifier mix in and it will return a float and also it is decorated by step operator and then we just uh, return this the test accurate score it and then however there 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 can be several set of classification measures just as of now as we say that we are taking a baseline now once we have the steps now we do connect each and every steps so we'll use the zenml pipeline and the pipeline will have following like this first of all you extrain x test and y test you import you use the importer which you built over there and then you use the svc trainer and then you and then you use the svc trainer where you give the the this step which x train and y train you give it and then you evaluate up so once you run it once you run it you will be getting and then you simply use this svc and then digits pipeline when you run it it will initiate a new run for the pipeline which is currently it uh, i have i've already run so this is the version number two so you can you, you can in the dashboard you can visit the version number one okay and then revisit the accuracy over here and as well as previous one so um you can simply go this it says step importer has started step importer has finished in 2.73 to 2 seconds as we see trainer has started as we see trainer has finished evaluator has started it is finished and then every run digits has finished you can visualize your pipeline runs in simply zenml dashboard
right and then you can run this code and then go to this U url so basically when you run it you will be prompted to url something like this and then you can easily go over there and then you will simply having your pipeline so basically your password should be default okay so basically whenever you um go over there so let me show it to you so basically um let me run it quickly if you want it uh yeah, i'll run it So you can see now it will train the third version. Okay. So sorry, it will train the second version because we have reinitiated our stuffs, right? So you can simply go over there and then um, it will run it. So now you see it's starting the Xenomel server. You can easily go over here and then it will it will open the Xenomel dashboard. Now, once it opens, you can, uh, so basically you'll be prompted to something like this. You have to write default over here. Yeah, you, you have to write default over here and then click on login. So once you click on login, you'll be automatically having, you'll auto automatically go to pipelines and then visualize your pipelines over here. However, this is not the pipeline which is over here. You also will, you'll be viewing something like this. So this helps. You can easily go to the previous one, see your model score, come to this, your model score and etc. etc. So I hope you really understood what exactly steps and pipelines means in Xenomel. This is just the basic things. In the next lecture, in the lecture uh, 1.2, what, what we'll do, we'll, I'll, I'll show you some of the magics of what Xenomel does. And then you'll be surprised to know about that as well, right? So let's get started with a new lecture. And that says pretty much simple that we'll first of all go ahead and we uh, understand what our data looks like so that it gives you much more clarity about the problem statement which we really want to do currently i'm not setting this too much on business objectives at all most probably will focus on the technical aspects of building this mlops project so over here you have the data and 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 the data says the uh, oldest customers data set and that data set has the uh, most probably over here, if you see that customer ID, customer unique, uh, customer city, customer state, and then we have geolocation data set, and then we have items data set, and a lot of the data sets out there. So what we did, we we made our custom data set over here. So if you go and see our custom data set, we have the lot of features where we combine everything to one, and then we have the review score, which is our uh, most probably our uh, review score, which is the satisfaction score. So I'll quickly show you um, uh, very basic how does it looks like in excel sheet because it's more important to let you aware about wow the excel sheet because it's much more common because currently it's a bit complicated over here if you think uh, in a basic um, uh, visual studio code so let's get started with actually show, showcasing it actually takes a bit of time because the file is a little bit large but no worries we'll get started with it but as soon as it oh as it is opening so what i'll do what i what i'll do i'll create several folder folders which is very important for us which you can take as a template for for starting off right so let's get started actually showcasing but before that it, it actually opened up so you see that order id customer id order status order purchase order approved that and a lot of features comes into it comes into this place and then finally you have review score which is from one to five which is from one to five however currently we'll be not using this review comment and we'll delete a lot of you know features though not not because of the feature not because of the it, it does not hold importance but all because but because because we i don't want to make it complex project initially you can of course tweak it accordingly you make it on uh, whole data you know do, do do in the setting of machine learning setting and a lot of things which, which you can do currently i want to make it pretty much simple that's very nice so let's get started this is our uh, target variable and all of this is our input features which we have to use to actually predict our uh, customer satisfaction score so but before that what i'll do i'll quickly make several folders which is very important for us to get started so um and also but but before that let's install several libraries which are listed in readme.md so uh, one thing which i just have to uh, make a note that you have to actually perform all the actions all the installations every of your operations in a virtual environment currently i'm in customer satisfaction virtual environment i actually use something known as you know what i use i i use spy env you can 
use Conda or you can use um, Venv or literally any virtual environment which you want to use for actually creating virtual environment. If you're not aware of what is virtual environment, it is actually con containerizes all your applications into one en environment so that your dependency conflict does not happen. I know if you do, if you don't you do, you, if you don't know, you might be not, not able to understand this. So we have linked a very nice resources in the GitHub rep repository just before this section, uh, which you'll see in the GitHub repository to actually understand what is it a uh, virtual environment means. But it's very, very important to in a virtual environment to actually have it everything on the good page. Cool. So what I'll do, I'll quickly install. Uh, so basically, uh, I'll, I'll, I'll first of all pip install XenML server. So that you, you can, uh, this is for the one who actually wants to run the whole project. Let's ignore this and let's try to install this first of all XenML. So I'll, I'll quick, quick, quickly go and install XenML. So you might be seeing that it is giving some errors. So what, what we have to do, we have to actually add something like this. I hope so it works. If it does not, we'll have to go to uh, XenML server and see it. Okay, cool. It's actually working. So it will take some time to actually download a XenML and, and I'm personally downloading over here so that you can also see that how exactly exactly these things works. And also what I'll do, I'll quickly um, import the requirements, which I have it over here uh, so that you understand it much more in a great detail. So um, what I'll do, I will... Have it over here okay cool so this is the requirements dot txt however you can uh, this is just for show cat boost light jbm will not be learning about these algorithms if you want to learn these algorithms enroll in my core machine learning course but uh, but we'll be not learning which this is just for installation of the libraries which is very important for us to install it prior however you can totally choose to ignore this we'll just coding step by step so that you understand it much more in greater detail so now it shows that it is actually installing and i pretty much think it is installed uh, yeah so it also say that that we have to upgrade so let's just copy from here to here and is very because the reason why i like to upgrade it because it really shows pretty interesting and pretty beautiful the way it downloads not not is this white white one it's actually very colorful that's why i like that i'll just clear it very quickly and then what i'll do i'll go ahead and xenomal up so what does Xenomal up does? It ups the order or awakes the Xenomal server so that you can view your pipeline. So you can view a lot of things out there if you then simply put Xenomal up. But before that, what you see that it is not running. The reason why it is not running that we forgot a very interesting thing out here. Before that, we have to actually write Xenomal init, which initiates the repository over here, which means that it, in it initiates the Xenomal repository over here. So that you could see that a, that a dot zen folder will be created over here as soon as possible as the runs is completed. So let's just wait for a few seconds and let the let the zenml gets complete. Zenml in it gets completed. The reason why we want to create the repository because we want to containerize or have all our code inside that repository so that it can be used for several other purposes, which you'll realize it a later on. Okay, cool. So, uh, but let let that running. It's, it is the first run. That's why it is a bit taking time. So let's just go ahead and create folders, which is very important for us. Now you see that XenML is zen, dot dot zen is created, and it says that your XenML client version does not match the server version. The version mismatch might lead to errors or unexpected behavior. Kindly refer to blah blah blah. So let's do one thing. Let's simply XenML downgrade. So that should uh, definitely replicate all our errors out there, which is this warning because it's it's you know it. I'll tell you from my personal opinion that it's very very important. I'll tell you from my personal. It's very important to fix up the warnings. The reason why uh, I want you to fix up the warnings because it's because sometimes it might happen that you'll completely get unexpected error and you'll never realize that you were here, right? So that's why I really want you to first of all. Um, uh, make sure that you are uh, sa satisfy all the errors. So basically it says that your Zenmil client version does not have a server version. So you can I either downgrade or do a lot of things to actually get it done. But uh, leaving that it, that it is, let's just go ahead and create our folders. So the folders which I'm gonna create is first of all, the Zen folders created, the data folders created. One thing which we will do in the future in, the, in other projects of this whole course is that we'll, 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 we'll not use CSV data set. We will use the poster SQL and then retrieve other data set from SQL because in real world setting, we not eventually use CSV. We actually use uh, SQL databases from cloud or somewhere like uh, poster 
SQL on local, right? And then we use from there and then we retrieve and play with that data, right? So that that we'll do it later on, but most probably just let's just keep it very simple and let's just go ahead with the data folder. Cool. Um, another folder which I really want to have is something known as model folder. Model will contain all my um for all my files, which is of like models and stuff, all the all the things which is required for training the model or you can also name it as a source so let's name it as a source because that's more important right so let's name it as a src and which is which all which all contains your data sets now what i'll do i'll quickly create something known as pipelines so pipelines will contain all our pipelines which we have which will build saved model will contain if you if you want to save the model um, eventually you don't need to but you know just just for reference we created steps so steps will contain all our components or the tasks which needs to be done over here and then at last uh, you can actually have init.py so let's quickly create something known as init.py and then after that we'll create there is always there, there's always a requirement of txt what i'll do i'll create something known as run pipeline so we can run our pipeline over there run pipeline.py cool so what i'll quickly do i will first of all um, code all the um, the data thing first of all what we'll do as as i said this is not a formal machine learning engineering course right it's the ml ops course so i'll make sure that to keep keep things very simple very naive right but if you want to learn like more of the advanced things in machine learning there's always core machine learning course available out there to actually help you out the first thing which we want to do the first thing which we want to do is ingest the data so we'll start off with first of all uh, steps so steps in that will create the file name ingest data.py and ingest data.py will consist of the steps will, will consist of the steps where we will ingest the data in it so what i'll do i'll quickly import logging out here so that we could eventually log when when, when things completed because it's very very important to log as well and then i'll import from import pandas as pd and then uh will from xenml import step as i as we as we have seen in basics of xenml that we have to actually use this step over there then i'll create a class of ingest data i'll create the class of ingest data um, oh my god you know the the way uh, my keyboard is not working pretty well and over there what i'll do i'm actually using copilot still but um uh, but uh the, you have to also you know give the good uh, documentation which will write pretty nicely so init so let's just quickly do it so i'll just init it and uh, you can actually do it like this um which is init and then when you run it you can actually write the get data and then ingesting data from the data path pd.readcsv and then self.data path right uh, or what you can do you can simply give the pd.readcsv the direct file to this it totally matters on what you want to give okay so then we'll create a step uh, so where we can use that class we can use and then that step will consist of the data path which will take str as an input which will be a string of course and it will return the data frame right it will return a very nice uh, data frame and then what i'll do i'll first of all make a try statement i really don't don't want to take the help of um <laughs> I really want to take take the help of this guy, uh, co-pilot, but if he's helping me, I can't do literally anything. So what I'll do, I'll show you the way to write the documentation. First of all, well, you know what you write? You write a description about that function. So use uh, ingesting the data from the data path. Then we'll write the arcs. Arcs means the argument it is going to take, the data part, which is the part to the data. And then what it returns, it returns the pandas data frame right this is how you actually do the ingest data and this is what the very interesting workflow is then we'll write in a try uh, try and accept a workflow which will have something like this where we first of all uh, in, in, instantiate our class which is ingest data which is ingest data where we'll first of all ingest data which is the data path and then we will simply say df ingest data dot get data and then return df this can be easily done in a three or one line of code as well as shown by the copilot but i want to make it pretty simple as well for the beginners if you're watching it so for accept exception as e and then it says error while ingesting the data and this is what the error is so this is this actually helps us to uh the best practices of coding and same goes to over here we have to actually maintain it nicely right um so let's just go ahead and quickly do it uh, let me just remove it yeah so i'll just make use of ingesting data from the data path and then we actually instantiate the method so this is this is this is used at this is used as instantiating the method uh, arcs 
That's it. And uh, you can also write instantiation, but it not bits is not required eventually. Over here, what 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 we'll do in just in the other from in data path, and then you simply write nothing, and then you just that's it. So this is a basic workflow which you have to go ahead and create this step. The first thing which we have created is of course ingest data. Now you can actually use this ingest data, which we'll eventually use it later on as well. So now the next step, once we have ingested the data, we need to we need the next one, which is we need to clean the data so now what no so now what what we'll do we will will work on creating step which we will use for cleaning of the data okay so let's let's do quick quickly one thing we'll create first of all let's import logging which is pretty important to do so uh, this is something which is of course and then from xenml import step right and then i create a step that step will clean the data that step will clean the data right and it will take the data frame I don't know what it will return, so let's skip it as a this, and then we'll pass it. So we want to make this step. We want to make this step, right, which cleans the data. The next step which I want to make is the the is the one which trains our model. Okay, which trains our model. So first of all, then I'll write model train dot type, and in that what I'll do, I'll create another step. I'll create another step. Okay, I'll create another step. So again, same thing. So you have to just go ahead and import logging and uh, import logging and then import pandas as pd and then from xenml import step right and then you just write step and then you just go ahead and create the train model right train model and it takes blah 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 and then it returns something and then trains the model faster okay so that's that's something which we have to go ahead and i'll just quickly make this like this cool now uh, my battery is low i'm so sorry for that but yeah first of all this is the model train which we have to have now once the model train is there we have the clean data we have to ingest data we have trained the model now the next step which should be it should be evaluation so it should be evaluate the model uh, so i'll just write evaluation dot pi and over there same thing which is something again so import logging uh, from xenml import step and then at step we'll just have something define evaluate model and then returns nothing okay so this is something which we have to actually have and then once the evaluation is done we'll have you know some you know, that's it so that's that's pretty that's the four steps which we want to have now you might be saying that i'm not implemented i'll implement it the first step is always create a blueprint right so that it runs nicely okay that's the first step and whenever you go you have to actually understand the first step now what what i'll do i'll create a pipeline okay i'll create a pipeline the pipeline would be first of all training pipeline training pipeline dot pipe the pipeline first of all what what it will do it will from xenml okay so we can just from xenml xenml import pipelines and then i add the rate pipeline so this just let's just write at the rate pipeline and then what i'll do i will simply go ahead and create the training pipeline the training pipeline the training pipeline will consist of the following that will consist of the following that will ingest the data that will ingest the data cleans the model cleans the data trains the model and evaluates the model okay so the training pipeline will consist of the following so i think that something is wrong over there cool. so let me just quickly do it uh just just give me a second okay so now what i'll do i'll create the uh, training pipeline so let's just quickly create a simple training pipeline Our training pipeline does not take anything most probably it takes the data path right it takes the data path as an input and that's pretty much it i guess yeah so it takes the data path as an input it first of all will will import everything over here will import first of all from steps uh, from steps dot ingest data i'll import the ingest data i hope that is working so let's just make sure that it's not following any conversions so yeah ingest df Cool. And then what I'll do I, after ingestion from steps dot clean data. Yeah. So we'll just go to clean data, import clean maybe. 
I'm not sure what it is, so let's let, let, let just go, okay, clean data. Let's import clean data, and most probably we'll have clean DF, just for make sure that we have the good naming conventions. And then after that, what I'll do, I'll import from step stream model, and then after that from evaluate model. I just make sure that evaluate model is there. Cool. So once we have all of these steps, what I'll do, I'll quickly do all of these things very nicely and show it to you, the pipeline. So we'll just go ahead, df is equals to ingest data. It will uh, ingest the path. It will clean. Okay, so most probably we'll just have something cleaning. So clean data will take the df as an input, fair enough. It returns nothing, so it returns nothing. So it will just have something very nicely over here. After cleaning, we'll have strain model, and then after that, we'll have evaluate model. I just hope so that everything takes um, DF as an input so that it makes sense. Okay, cool. So now, once we have this, what I'll do, I'll do nothing. I'll just go ahead and then run the pipeline. Okay, so how to run this pipeline? So we can just create something known as the run pipeline as we have created. So let, let's just go and create the run pipeline as soon as possible so we'll just go from pipelines dot training pipeline import training pipeline and then you just go maybe just write train pipeline just just for make sure that we are following the naming conventions so the train train pipeline and then after that i'll just if name is equal equals to main i just hope that it does yeah We'll just run the pipeline so run pipeline will happen something like this and the data pipeline which i'll give is i'll just copy the whole path from here and send it out to you. There are a lot of things which you can do. You can actually upload it in cloud and do stuff, which we'll do it later on the, of the course. Okay, cool. So let's run it. So are you ready? If you are, then give me a thumbs up. I'll get started with it. So uh, I'll just go ahead and clear, most probably. And then let's run it. Python and pipeline. You know, the when I code, I actually listen, you know, a lot of, you know, what do you say? Uh, music, but eventually I'm not as of now. So, so sorry for that. Install pandas, pip install pandas, right? So let's install quickly because that's more important. Okay, something really happened over there. Uh, evaluation, right? Okay. As I'd say, uh, import uh, pandas is pd. Let's go ahead. Okay. It says model object is not callable. I think most probably what's the error is about is about uh, let, 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 let me just quick, quickly go to the error. Training pipeline, pipelines. Okay, it's actually pipeline, bro. Right? It's actually pipeline. Okay, cool enough. Let's go ahead. Okay, cool. So something it is giving a really interesting error uh, because of some other things. So let's just quickly fix it. So it when so what is happening? I'll tell you why the error is happening. It says that wrong type out wrong type for output for step clean df. Why it says that it is expecting pandas data frame because you have told that it will give pandas data frame, but it is giving none. <laughs> so uh, we have to actually write none over here. Same over here. Uh, same over here. So it is actually expecting that, um, you know, uh, it will return something. That's why it, it was initiating that error. It will give warnings. Just go ahead with the warnings. Okay, that's pretty nice thing which happened. Cool. So I'll explain you what, what, what just happened. You can choose to ignore um, completely about all of this stuff. Like what is this user stack and orchestrator artifact store? We'll explain it later on. So you'll see that the ingest data started, clean df started, right? Clean df has finished, evaluate model started, evaluate model finished, trade model started, trade models finished. Nothing goes over there. That's it. Now what I'll do is I'll, I'll showcase you this very simple dashboard, which is out here. So we'll just go ahead and go to the dashboard quickly. So the username would be default and then log in. So when you log in, simply go to the pipelines. For you, it might be super new. So let's just go to pipelines. This is the train pipeline. So let's go to the first one. 
Okay, fair enough. So ingest data gives the output, which is the data frame. So, so that, that is a da data frame. So if you go and and you see the this is the output, and it also shows some of the visualizations or you know data, data type of it. You see the data is imported. This is called the artifacts. Okay, the thing which is stored. Uh, and over here, if you see for after every step, so this ingest EF has something known as what is the name of this? What is the doc string, which is like the documentation, right? Start time, run time, and all those things. And then uh, after that, what what is the output and the artifact? So artifact is something which is a returned after every step, which is stored in some local stores. It is which is stored in some store which can be retrieved further. So you see where where it is stored? It is stored in this U, uh, URI. So if you go over there and you will see a very nice output over there if you if you go to this particular location. Okay, that is it. And logs are simply nothing. It's using cached version, step two. You you might be notice what is using cached version of it. This is pretty interesting to understand. We'll we'll understand it with greater detail. I'll show you a very nice example of it. Just wait. Uh, and then you have clean df, which is again clean df is finished, evaluate model, train model. So you see the ingest data gives the and then it does not return anything. So this is a visualization which you can for sure see over here. And uh, that's pretty much it. And now we pre pretty much think that our uh, dashboard is working, our pipeline is running up, and we are good to go with it, right? Cool. So uh, one thing which I just want to make sure that you are aware about is something known as caching. So, uh, so what if I do enable cache is equals to true? False. Sorry. Let's run it. Okay. Um, let it yeah cool run pipeline now let's see this on our dashboard pipelines the one the latest one so um so you see the same thing which happened over here so i'll just quickly you know do it and then show it to you okay so now this is the you you, you could see another version is over there which is version number four now ingest data started ingesting data from this ingest data has finished but over here do you think that something really happened interesting using cast version of ingest df so Zenimin has an amazing and super duper amazing feature what does it mean that it uses the cast version so if there's nothing changes in the data if there's nothing changes in the code or if there's nothing changes in that step it will use the, the step from the previous run and you see that how interesting this is that see how is the level is going on that's nothing changes right and we are eventually using those because the caching was enabled but but caching was disabled right so caching was disabled but over here i told to enable to to actually uh actually i say caching is also first that don't do caching don't use the run from the previous version so it states step in just data has started uh ingesting data and then ingest is finished so if you make it true if you make it true so let me let me just make it true let's run it <laughs> so uh using cast version of ingest it uses from the clean df also not change evaluate models and models it just trains the model in a matter of seconds you see how good it is say you're training a large language model right and this is the feature over there you'll be super happy that your cast version has been used sometimes it causes error but most of the time it works like a charm okay that's pretty much cool uh, i hope you understood most of the, most of the things from on the next session or the next video what i'll do i'll uh, implement all these steps and run it step by step uh, and after afterwards i'll deploy the model i'll deploy the model using mlflow i'll also track i'll show you how i how we can use mlflow experiment tracker to actually use this and then we'll make a very basic stream streamlit application to actually use this uh, to, the, to actually use a deployed model 
to actually make the inference, right? We'll use the MLflow deployment and uh, MLflow tracking uh, uh, libraries to actually integrate into XenML and the user. Currently, we have the blueprint ready. So the, what do you have learned in this? First of all, you learned the way to about write code and to structure the code. Also, you learned a very important thing that it's always good to start with preparing a blueprint and then starting coding it. I hope it really made sense to you. I'll be catching up in the next video. Tab tak ke liye. Bye bye. Hey everyone, uh, welcome back to another video. So what I'm going to achieve through, through this video is we'll implement all the steps which is listed out here. So that with the clean data, ingest data, evaluation stuff. However, uh, we'll, we'll do it in very uh, nice way. I'll show you the way to write code in a nice way by using design patterns. I hope that you have already, that you're already aware about the design patterns before you started this project. If you are not, then also we have a very nice resources, uh, which, which will be linked, of course, before this lectures, you'll be also, you'll be taught the basics of the patterns like strategy pattern, factory pattern, singleton pattern, and all of this is already taught to you. So let's get started with actual impl implementation of uh, data cleaning and see if you're not aware about these patterns you, we actually teach in our course core machine learning course you can actually consider enrolling over there or we'll add before this uh, section as well cool so in source what i'll do uh, we have several other so first of all in S src we'll implement all these classes or the classes of these steps and then use the classes from this in these type in these steps first thing which which i really want to develop is data cleaning and data cleaning is something which is obvious which we have to work on so let's get started with actually uh, creating uh, data cleaning classes so i'm going to start off by importing logging if we do really need to log literally anything and then i'll import from abc import abc and abstract method uh, and then after that from typing import union but i'll just make i'll just import some basic libraries and then as we need we can import more so um, i'll import pandas as well import pandas as pd and then from a scale learn dot model selection because we are going to just split our data as well so what I'll do, I'll create a abstract class, abstract class for defining a strategy for handling data. Okay, you might already be aware by several animals example of strategy pattern and all. So first of all, create an abstract class for defining a strategy. This is known as the data strategy. It's known as the data strategy. This is this will be an abstract class. This after abstract class would be abstract class defining strategy for handling uh, data okay cool so now this will uh, will will create an abstract method in, the, in it we'll create an abstract method this you know the reason why we do it is already known to you the reason why why we do it is to just make sure that we have a that we can just uh, that the data data cleaning class will show the same handle data right we have to make the same class so when 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 we'll work on other uh, the 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 strategies of these data cleaning so you you will see how handy it is so handle data this will be the data frame because i expect the data frame uh, df pd dot data frame and that should return that should return um set of you know pd data frame or the series so basically we can we we, we can just say as i said from uh, from typing import union and then you simply add union and then pd.dataframe and it will return pd.series2 okay so this is what it is going to uh, return however this is just an abstract class this is just a blueprint i would say blueprint means this is what we have to implement in our strategies we can override this method to implement our own custom solutions so let's first of all start building data pre-processing strategy so we'll we'll build a data pre-processing -pre strategy data pre-process okay let's make it look good strategy and that will have something or you know, some something which is that will inherit data strategy with an abstract class so that we can override this handle data right override this handle data so when as soon as we have the handle data so it will it will take the data frame as an input and it turns the data frame as an output 
okay so we don't need to logging as of now so it will try so we'll we'll have the try and exceptions try uh, so basically we so basically I'll, I'll first of all drop certain you know um, certain columns from the data because if this is something which as as i already told you that we want to make it super duper simple that's why i'll uh, I'll, I'll drop several columns however these columns are not like they are not important they are actually very important just for simplicity for this project i'm going to delete some of the uh, some of the um, uh, columns from the data because that's more important right so what i'll do i'll just um, i'll just i have already already written the names of the, the the columns which i have to delete so i'll just copy them out from quickly from there uh, yeah so you can also see that a order approve that order you know receive that and all those stuff which is required over here okay very cool so data dot drop you do you drop certain uh, columns you drop certain columns out there and then you simply go ahead with it okay cool so now what i'll do i'll go to go go to the next step i really hope that it works nicely yeah cool so now what i'll do um there are some certain columns there are some certain columns which has which has the um null values okay so what i'll do i uh, i'll quickly fill up the null values you can do by two or three two or three things okay what if, what you can do you can actually uh, do the when these things are analyzed when you do the eda part however i have done already eda on my part as i as as i said you can actually make the eda and then see which columns and all i have already did it just for simplicity so that it actually makes sense to you to actually get started with directly with the project so there are some certain columns um which is actually you know uh, there's some certain columns which which has the null values and we'll try to you know uh, make it work so here we go so the data which we have they had, so basically these these columns fill now with a median of that column and in place equals to true with a median of that column in place equals to true median means we have to take the median of this and then we have to permanently apply this on our data right and there's review common message which also also fill the null values with no review because there are several null, null, null values in the data so that we can just write no review over there okay that's very cool so now what i'll do i will just go ahead and uh, we will we will drop the columns we'll drop the columns which are you know uh which are of non which are of uh, non number type or some 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 columns which are actually you know uh, uh, numbering times okay so basically we'll just take columns to train our model who are numbers however you can take like see the the reason why i'm doing this the selecting the number is not because if i want to you know i i'm doing it on purpose it is like the reason why is I just want to make this project simple. So I'll select the, I'll only select the columns which are of numeric so that I don't need to apply a lot of processing steps. Okay, so what I'll do, I will simply go ahead and data is equal to data dot select, data dot select, select data types. I'll select the data types which are include uh numbers so np dot number. Okay, so this data will have the columns will have the data which are of normally numeric type so now we don't need to worry about categorical encoding ordinal encoding or whatsoever or even tokenizer of this this is also removed okay but you can do a lot of things out here you don't need to remove this you, you actually implement another processing st strategies where you encode the data where you tokenize this re re review comment messages and a lot of things which you can do over here we'll also drop a couple of uh a couple of you know uh, columns and the columns which we have to drop is the following so the first one is uh, customer zip pre prefix and the order item so these are the columns which we have to drop the reason why we have to drop because this is not important at all okay so we can just write data is equals to data drop drop equals to true and then return data except exception as e logging error and raise e cool so um, you might be worried about like what did i did over here first I dropped certain columns which is not required for us as of now because of the because of making the project simple second 
you drop the you actually fill up the null values which are available in the in these kind of columns and then you only select the data which is a numeric type we are not selecting the categorical encoding just categorical data this just because of the simplicity of the project and then you drop certain certain uh, you know um, uh, columns and then you just return the data that's pretty much it that's pretty much it you're doing that's pretty nice so now what i'll do i'll create another strategy the another strategy is data split strategy so basically data divide strategy and then that will inherit the data strategy and in that we'll just quickly create strategy for dividing the data into train and testing set we'll again uh, make the handle data And then simply data it will take p dot data frame and it will return you know it will return it will return the union of pandas data frame and series you will notice why i'm saying union Un union means uh both of them so here we go so i'll like, quickly explain you what does it matter so x is equals this is all copilot that's why i love him so data dot drop we are dropping the um, the, the the target variable and then we have y which is the target variable and then x train by x trace y train by test and give the test size to be 0 0.2 and the random state to be 42 and then x train is the panas data frame x taste is the panas da data frame y train is a series and y test is a series that's why your output of the combination of both of them i hope it makes pretty much very sense so now once we have that now once we have that we will make we'll make a final class where we will utilize where we'll utilize both of these strategies into the class so we'll create another class which is data cleaning okay the data cleaning data cleaning class which will process the data and divide the data so i'll just quick create data class work which will which pre processes okay processes the data oops and divides us into training and testing set cool so what i'll do i'll quickly create define init and then it will take self data frame and it will also take what strategy you want to implement that strategy would be the would, would be the data strategy it can be either you know this these are all other these are the types of data strategy right this abstract class so strategy will take either do you want data process strategy or divide strategy okay cool so what i'll do i'll quickly self dot strategy is equals to strategy okay so now we'll we'll have another class which is handle data sorry method and that will that will uh, either return union or you know a simple panda state data frame so this will return self dot strategy dot handle data and then self data so basically the strategy will have, for for example if someone chooses this data divide strategy so 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 data we can use the simple class so basically someone can someone will go and just run this class data cleaning so some, some something like this so if, if name is equal equals to is equal equals to main oops i'm just sorry for it okay um over here it will just say data cleaning okay so it will say something sorry for example assume that we are reading this uh csv file however we are not going to do it right now and then data cleaning and then data cleaning is will instantiate this with data and then you know we want to use this data pre-process strategy so that data pre-process strat that data cleaning will use this data pre-process strategy in this case over here and then it, it has a method called handle data it will run over there then you can same same way you can give it another strategy right which is data device strategy it will do nicely okay so i hope that you really, really understood the the way that we do this is called a strategy pattern where you first of all create the abstract class and there are several strategies in it which is data pre-process and data divide and then you create the final class which will make use of those strategies uh, over here okay and this one this uh, this is actually very helpful when actually um, be just for flexible code writing as well as readable as well as not writing so much of if and else statements 
Cool. So what I'll do, I'll quickly implement this into um, clean data. So let's implement this into clean data. That's more important for us. Okay, so clean data will take the data frame as an input and then we'll just uh, go ahead and try and then let's go. So first of all, we'll import, we'll import what? We'll, we'll, we'll have to import uh, from source.data cleaning. I'll import data cleaning, data divide strategy and data pre-process strategy. Okay. Cool. So once once we import this, now we'll just go ahead and use it. Try and then try and accept. So basically, first of all, we'll, we'll create a processes process strategy. So over here, we can just go ahead and create pre-process process strategy, process strategy, and then we'll create the data, data, data cleaning class. Data cleaning is equals to data inst instantiate the data cleaning class by giving this process strategy. And then we will uh, have something which is processed data is equals to the the object which we have the object which is data cleaning dot process data okay dot process data sorry 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 handle data so what is that eventually doing we have this class we are giving the strategy which we want to use we want to we, we want to use the data people strategy and then we are calling that strategies uh, method which is handle data which will handle the data then we'll have the data divide strategy or maybe divide strategy right and then it will again data cleaning and then you have something known as process data in this case not the data now you have the device strategy now we can simply make use of x train y x test y train y test dot handle data because it is returning pandas data frame in series and then we have to actually logging data is completed and then accepts exception as e logging error raise e okay so now one thing which is missing uh, is it returning none it's returning x train x test y train y test right so we'll use something known as annotated which is the python built-in uh, type setting parameters uh, type hints parameters so let's first of all quickly do this from typing extensions from typing extensions i'll import annotated which is a formal one so annotated what it will do and also we will have to import the tuple let's quickly import tuple from typing import tuple sorry uh, over here we'll have tuple and then okay so annotated the first output the first output is of course pd dot data frame and then it will it it's actually extreme right it's actually extreme now we have another one which is annotated x test and then another one y train and y test and mostly we are done so so basically this is what happens that we are done and now one can actually now it says that it will return the tuple it will it it will return the following it will return the uh, four four types which is data frame data frame series and series which is an annotated using annotated uh, from typing extension extensions so i hope that it makes sense uh, now i let me see what type of error it is giving it's mostly because of the this i hope this fixes it so now we are done with this uh, step now we can just you know simple make it very basic doc string cleans the data and divides orx so let's just write orx raw data and then simply you just have this you can also write returns training data testing data training labels and testing labels okay so now we have this class ready for us and then we can actually use the sorry step ready for us where we're using several strategies and then we'll actually implement it okay so i hope this this actually makes sense to you all now the next thing which we which will work on is something something known as um which is something known as model development so model development is something which is pretty much important we'll actually make use of uh, linear regression which we will implement right away from here we'll implement right away from here and uh, you yeah. know so yeah 
Um, so we'll just implement lin linear regression out here so that it makes sense for you to get started with it. So we'll implement a basic uh, LR so that it is not. However, there's a lot of things which you can implement. I In the repository, repository which you'll get, you'll be having implemented these kind of like, you know, random forest or XG boost, cat boost. And then after that, we'll evaluate our model. So currently we're not focusing on core machine learning kind of thing. We're just focusing on building a full MLOps project so I can build it in more complex such situations. Another ways which we have is evaluation as well as where we'll, we'll, we'll make an eva evaluation measures. And then after that, we'll also make the steps for it. And then we are mostly done. However, there's something which is left, which is something known as deployment pipeline. We'll also deploy the pipeline, right? You will be amazed to see that the way we deploy the pipeline, the way we run it, right? And the way we run it, and also we'll just use a streamlit application to actually go ahead with this in deployment. So I hope that really it makes sense. So let's catch up in the next video. So now everyone, what I'll do, I'll go to the next step, which is model development, which is pretty much important as well. Um, so let's get started with model development quickly and then try try to complete this project as soon as possible. So model dev.py and in that what I'll do, I'll create us, I'll create again the, you know, uh, abstract class, and then we have to extend that abstract class from ABC, from ABC, import abc and abstract method so let let's just go and start off with it so we'll create a class model the class model will have abc right this is the abstract class for all models this is abstract class for all models um, and then after that we'll create an abstract method through the abstract method an abstract method will be called as a self train and that self train will have something as x train which is training training data y train which is testing sorry uh, training labels we, we can also create some method known as optimize uh, but it's not required as of now so let's just leave it so uh, i'll create a very simple class see my point again i'll say i'm emphasizing on it First of all, focus on learning about MLOps and then implementing la uh, complex models and stuff. So I'll just make a simple linear regression model on top of it. So let's just make a simple linear regression model and then it will take X-Train and Y-Train and quarks. It will, uh, first of all, forget that and it will just, okay, cool. So we'll have some, some something which is training and the training will, first of all, We'll just import from sklearn dot linear model import linear regression and uh, most probably let's name it as a model okay it makes much more sense <laughs> okay so um, i'll just make it over here quickly which is reg equals to linear regression quarks and then reg dot fit, which is, and then return the regression, and then return the regression, right? If we can also put put this in a try and try and error, so so try accept, okay, cool. Okay, that's very nice. So now what I'll do, uh, so now what I'll do, I'll simply go ahead and, uh, you know, just we have the model, the training model ready. However, uh, we'll see in the next project which we'll do, this is model development is much more complex because we have to, first of all, train the model, validate the assumption, test if things are working or not, you know, tweak the data, feature engineering, cleaning, which we'll do in the next project. You don't need to worry about it. Okay, so this is the model development, which is a linear regression model, where we simply fit it and then we train the model, we complete the training of the model. So let's quickly go to model train and then we just implement something over here. So uh, what I'll do, I'll just go ahead and then import from model, sorry, from source dot model dev import linear regression model, right? Yeah, lin linear regression model. Now what I'll do, I'll simply go ahead and uh, I'll, I'll simply go ahead and then first of all, we have to first of all get the get the data which we have to so it will take several inputs so it will take x train x test y train and y test so let's just take cell x train and then peter data frame x test y train okay x test y train and y test and it will uh, yeah 
that's pretty much it it will return regression mixing so actually it will return that linear regression model right however there is something known as regression mixing right so from sklearn from sklearn dot base okay dot base import regression mixing regression mixing is a type of you know which is the type like of course we are going to re um, output the regression uh, algorithm right trains the model and then simply you know appreciates the model my uh, i mean just trains the model that's that's pretty much it it does okay cool so let's just first of all do it and then let's go on the next path so the model which we have is equals to none and we'll also make a config.py we'll also make that config.py so make some something as config.py and that config.py will have from zenml.steps import base parameter base parameters and then it'll cre create something known as model name config that will have base parameters out here and it will contain the model configurations which we want which we want to add model configs which can be model name first of all model what what model name which we want to use what model we want to use and then yeah so so that's it so that is the model name which we have to use so first of all we'll import some something which is over here we'll import a model train and then we'll import um from dot config import model name config and it will also take config which will be the type of model name config okay cool so now it will, it will it will also take the config so config will contain this stuff so if so if if the config dot model name is linear regression we will say uh, just just you know uh, use that model which is uh, lin linear regression model linear regression model and then just train the model on x train and y train okay that that is something which you really want to do or what or what what we can do we can just have something which is a model so it will of course it, will, it should it should return something right so let me just go and quickly see yeah it's, it is returning linear regression model we just have trained model is equals to model train and x train x test and it returns the trained model else uh, we can just write you know something which is model name not listed or something some something like that you can raise a value error okay so um the reason that the reason why 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 i do this over here you might implement other models as well you can just go ahead and implement class random forest model right and random forest model so you can just go ahead and then don't 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 need to change the name you can just say if the config says if the config dot model name says random forest regressor you train another model so this is how it works okay you don't need to worry about like a uh, lot of things out, out out here it's very simple to understand so just have it as a uh, try and accept exception as e logging error and then raise the e okay good so that's it about the training of the models we'll just go ahead and quick quickly create some something known as evaluation system part so let's just go and create the evaluation part as well evaluation dot by let's go ahead and create the evaluation dot pi so again over here we'll create a very basic again abstract class and then it extend that ab abstract class to other um, strategies which you're going to use over there from abc from abc import big abc an abstract method and then we'll just have class evaluation that that will take abc and then it will have something it is an abstract class right it's an abstract class defining strategy defining strategy for evaluating our models right and then we'll have abstract method abstract method will have something calculate scores so it will calculate the scores out here which is y true and then it will it it it, it is a numpy in the array so it's just import numpy as np so numpy in the array and y prediction which is also the numpy in the array so cool so over here you have something which is calculus course which is abstract method 
and then abstract method will have something over here which is y to the, the moral prediction sorry ground truth and the moral prediction now what i'll do i'll simply go ahead and uh, create several strategies for it the first strategy which i which i'll create is something known as mse so that at that mse will inherit the abstract class of evaluation and this is the evaluation strategy this is the evaluation this is the evaluation strategy that uses mean squared error right mean square error and then we'll create the calculate score that calculate scores will take self again y, y true and y true and uh, which is of of course numpy and areas so i'll just copy it from here okay cool so uh, again so we'll just start with uh, we'll just say we have entered calculating mse so it will start off with the calculating mse so basically we can use simply something known as from scikit-learn matrix from sklearn dot matrix i'll import mean squared error and r2 score so we'll just go ahead and then just do it so let's let's do so we'll just have some something mse we'll just give y true and y pred we just say that it is done and then we return the mse Otherwise, we see if there's anything wrong, which is error in cal calculating scores, and that's pretty much it. So uh, it returns the MSE. So now we have one strategy done. We'll go and create another strategy. We'll go and create another strategy. Another strategy would be R2 score. So uh, R2 score will have the evaluation strategy that you, that uses so that that uses R2 score, and then we'll just calculate the scores and then give everything out here. So it just implements automatically. Of course, you can add your documentation on your own over here. I'm I'm not adding it right now. Please add it by your own the way I have taught you to do so. We'll have we'll have another um, evaluation strategy which is evaluation uh, RMSE, and then over there we'll uh, again that's evaluation strategy that uses the root mean squared error to calculate stuff. So it just again just you know mean squared error and then RMSE and squared equals to false. So basically over here you're cal calculating the root mean squared error, right? Okay, so now we have the RMSE also done. So we have several evaluation strat strategies totally done now we'll just go ahead and then implement it in evaluation out here so now which is the last thing which you have to do is a very very simple that you actually implement this so we have uh, so first of all i'll import from src.modeldev sorry evaluation i'll import msc rmsc and r2 r2 is it there evaluation r2 yeah r2 is there cool r2 is there um so it will just first of all we'll have the evaluate model this will take a lot of things first of all it will take model okay that model would be the regressor mixin so we'll have to import this is the type of the model would be the regression mixing because it is a regression model right so import regressor mixin then we'll uh, then we'll uh, get the x test then we'll get the x test that x test will be the pandas data frame and then we'll get the y test again for for understanding now let's try try to implement the solution let's try to quickly implement the solution so first of all we'll get the prediction we'll get the prediction quickly the, the prediction which we'll get is model dot predict and then on the x test so model predicts on x test we can we create the mse which is which is equals to mse class so so sorry mse class is equals to mse and then we use that mse is equals to mse class class dot cal calculate scores it will simply you just have to give y test and predictions and then we are done so now we have another which is r2 class r2 class and then just about and and then after that you have cal calculate the scores and that's pretty much it and then you have another rmse class arm cal calculate the scores and then that's pretty much it cool so we'll return at least well let's return two things let's return um mse let's let's return r2 score and rmse right because that's more efficient to actually look at the matrix so we are done and we can just put this into try and then it is into accept error evaluating the models 
Okay, cool. So now we are mostly done. The one thing which is left out here. So you might be thinking what is left. Guess what is left. So over here we are returning to R2 score and RMSE. So we also have to indicate over here that what thing we are returning. So I'll just import from typing import tuple and from typing extensions I'll import annotated. Okay, so this will have tuple and then it will return uh, two things. Let's annotate the float R2 score as well as the RMSE. Okay, so now I hope that it makes little bit more sense now. Uh, I really hope so. Yeah, cool. So now we have the evaluate model also done, which is which means that we are pretty much done with ingesting of the data, cleaning the data, more training the model, evaluating the model. Now you understand everything is completed. Now what is left? Let's worry about that. So we have something known as run pipeline. So let's try to go ahead into, into, into that pipeline and let's try to create the pipeline. Let's try to run that pipeline right away from here. So let, let me just quickly go and run the pipeline. Um, so I'll just go to, um, yeah. Cool. So I'll enable the cache as a true and this takes the data path. That's, that's good. That's good. Takes the data path. We have then cleaned it. What does clean df takes? Clean df takes something and what is, what does it returns? This returns x train, x and y train. Okay, so let's just quickly write this. X train, x and y train, y test. It, it's a clean df, right? This takes the data. So now it is done. We have train model. So train model, what does it does? Train model, you know, takes x train, x test, y train, y test, and the configs as well. So what, what we have to do over here? We have to actually, um, mm -hmm. okay. So let's try to uh, quick quickly do that as well. Um, so I'll just go ahead and uh, model train. So this is train model. Okay, so train model. And then after that, model is equals to train model. Train model, X test, Y test, all the way around the Y test. And then we simply go ahead and MSE, which is MSE sorry r2 score and rmse you evaluate the model by giving these things x test and y test i hope that really is x test and y test that's it yeah that's true and we are mostly done right so now we have the pipeline ready we have everything ready now let's go and run the whole pipeline to see the magic I'm pretty, I'm pretty much sure that it will, it will give some sort of error but always be, the, be on a positive side so let, let's just quickly go and run the pipeline Okay, so no module named scikit-learn. So let, let's just quickly go and imp so I'll just go sklearn pip install. And then just go and, uh, okay. I'll use this one because this is much more easy to install. Okay, let's just wait for this to be installed because I'm, I'm actually using the new environment. That's why please activate your environment before working on the project, please. That's the request for you, all of you out here. Let's wait and let's see the magic, what happens. It's running on, so just wait for a few seconds. Um, and after that, we are mostly done, done with the pipeline of MLOps. You will see the dashboard. The next thing which is left, which is integration of tracking of our experiments, which is I'm using MLflow and then deployment of our model using MLflow deployment. These two things are left and then we are mostly done with the project and you will be seeing like the, now, now I really hope that you are seeing the way we do the project, the way, you know, we do the caching stuff, the way we write the code that is much more visible. In the next set of projects, you'll see much more challenging code, much more challenging topics, which eventually you will learn by yourself. So I don't know why it is not running, but okay. So cannot unpack a non-iteratable step or effect object. So I guess something really happened interesting out here. So let, let's just quickly go and see what the error it has given. So this expects the data frame and this returns X test and Y train and Y test. And then clean DF will have the following. Full name, uh, okay. 
by test. So let's see now if it is actually returning. Oh yeah, so you see that it, that it is not returning anything. We have to actually return it, right? And that's why it is saying that. That's why it is returning none. And when it is asking for the output, so that's why it is not able to. Cool, so ingest data started, clean data completed, and then we just go ahead and then it does, does something, small training completed, something failed in the pipeline and R2 score is not defined. <laughs> so let's go and quickly do it. So uh, let's go to evaluation. And then this is R2, not R2 score. So let's just go and do that as well. So now you will see how quickly it will be run. First of all, it will use the cached version. You know, it, it, it will use the cached version of it and it will just do the evaluate model and then you're done. You see the magic? You see, you, you, you just see the magic. You can just simply install pip install pi arrow to re remove this error. So let's just quickly go and send ML up. So let's just go and send ML up. Please do it. It will open it. Okay. Okay, sir. I'll give you the default. Let's go to pipelines. Let's go to train pipeline. Let's go to this pipeline. You see, it ingests the data. It gets the output. Clean the data. It the clean DF. It returns these. These goes into training the model. It returns these text and vitus goes in evaluation of the model. It returns our R2 score and RMSE. You see how magical this is, right? How magical and how really interesting these things has become right now. I'm, I, I really think that this is the power, this is the future of ML, right? If you don't know about this, you don't know anything, right? So I just go, I just hope that you understand it much more greater detail. We are mostly done with the project. However, there's two things which are left, which is deployment, as well as we are also left with tracking of our experiments. So I hope this makes sense. I'll be catching up in the next lecture. Tab tak liye. Bye. So hey everyone, uh, let's come back to our project. So basically, the project is left with two things. The first thing which is left, which is of course our most favorite experiment tracker, and the second thing which is left, which is the deployment of our model. So I'll talk about what this experiment tracker means along with I'll talk about the deployment pipeline. So let's just first of all talk about what this experiment tracker means. So when you do the data science engineering or a real world machine learning, machine engineering job, then most probably what you will see that whenever you have, you actually want to track every runs which you do because you have to tweak the parameters and then rerun it and then check the score from the previous one, compare it with several matrix and see how well it, well it was performing in the 30th run or even in the first run right so we need to track our every experiments which we are doing over here so so where should we implement our experiment tracker the experiment tracker will will be implemented over the train model so what i'll do i'll quickly implement the experiment tracker out there so when you go to the model train so model train will have something like this and uh, uh, I'm so sorry for the background noise. I'm extremely, extremely sorry because this is India and you keep on hearing these voice. So I'll, I'll simply import MLflow, import MLflow. So once we import the MLflow, what I'll do, I'll uh, sim simply go ahead and then initiate an experiment tracker class, oh, sorry, uh, object. But but before that, we have to import something known as client from XML. Client import client. And that seems like experiment tracker equals to client get experiment uh, get active stack so i'll just go ahead and then dot active stack okay wait, wait for a second yeah dot active stack dot experiment tracker so once we have this, uh, we can easy, easily use this. So basically what, what we have to do, we have to use this MLflow tracker, right? So we have to, in the, in the decorator, we have to pass the experiment tracker and experiment tracker, which we'll use is the following experiment tracker dot name, and then the name of that. So that it should be notified that this step has the experiment tracker, right? So now what we have to do in this case, we have to actually, you know, um, uh, log our models okay log our models so in this case we have to actually use the scikit-learn auto log so basically what i'll do i'll use mlflow.sklearn.autolog this will automatically log your models scores and everything out there right in the same way you have for several other libraries so basically we'll do the mlflow.sklearn.autolog 
same what i'll do i'll do on something known as evaluation right so so what 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 i can do and let me just go to evaluation part and in the evaluation part I, I i have to do the same thing i have to actually copy the two couple of things which i did and then what i'll do i'll simply copy the step as well step as well and then over here what i'll do i'll, sim I'll simply go ahead and then select ml flow log matrix and then i'll log the mse right same goes with mlflow.log matrix i'll log the r2 and then i'll log our mse right so i've already logged these three things now what i'll do it's mostly done so now we actually you can use this particular um statement over here but but before that let's import sorry 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 let's import something known as import mlflow Cool. So now what we have to do? Guess what? What we have to do? We have to simply go to not run pipeline and then simply run the same pipeline. So let's just quick quickly run. I've already uh, done this. So let's just run the pipeline first. So once we run the pipeline, it will say that we are using the ML flow tracker. And once once it says that that we are using the ML flow tracker, it will say something like this. Just no module names uh, ML flow. So what you can do? You can simply go ahead and just just uh, just like XenML integration install ML flow, which is simply you can go over here and then search something which is like this right and then paste it sorry for that um, simply paste it over here which is xenomal integration install ml flow it will take some time to install the ml flow but before going on to running that you have to make sure that first of all i'll explain you what the stack means stack means that there's something the stack which is a containerized thing where your project is running and the stack currently I'll, I'll show you what the stack contains stack contains very artifact stores which are default okay orchestrator which is default you don't need to worry about what these terminologies means so but basically the thing which is a default the the stack which you're working on the what do you say stack means i'll say in terms of environment which you're working on you will also need to stay to the xenomo that i'm going to use mlflow please register this experiment tracker okay and just like this as in stack you have orchestrator orchestrator means we'll, we'll talk about it which eventually it's called this pipeline however we have artifacts right artifacts will talk about all of these terminologies in very great detail um, however you don't need to know a lot more you all have so much theoret the theoretical books but basically we'll first of all install our mlflow integration once it is installed as soon as you can see over here we can simply go and register our experiment tracker so once you go and register our experiment tracker you can just say xenomal experiment tracker register mlflow tracker but before that what i'll do i'll show you what the xenomal stack list and it will show the set of stacks which we have over here right and uh, it's taking too much time i guess yeah okay so basically this is a very common error which you might get if you're using mac so you just have to do a couple of things the first thing which i do is xenomal disconnect and then what you have to do you have to run another command which is xenomal up so when you disk disconnect it so basically it is giving another error which is error initializing sql store error initializing whatsoever this is something new error however you can totally choose to ignore this right just say xenomal up xenomal up okay cool something is really interesting over here so xenomal down so maybe down it or we might need to, okay fair enough so and then we'll up it and if it gives the same error we have to run the xenomal disconnect maybe and then let's see if it works xenomal so disconnect okay xenomal up let's for wait for a few seconds and it should work okay cool it's working pretty fine that's very very nice so now we have we have fixed it so let's let just quick quick quickly go and let let me show you what this set is driving so current stack which we have as of now the current stack which we have as of now it will say that everything is default right so your orchestrator is default and artifact store is default 
right orchestrator where you're running an artifact store where are your uh, variables you're gonna resume the, the artifacts which are being stored over there so let, let's just quickly go and then also make the experiment tracker so you can just go over to readme and then copy this command and then paste it which is xenml experiment tracker register our ml flow tracker which will have the flavor of ml flow so it says that unable to register ml flow tracker which is in the same workspace so let's just quick quickly go and change something customer okay so now it should work fine because i guess i've already used it somewhere cool then you have to just go and uh, okay let's just quickly ignore model deployer as of now okay we'll come back to this or let's just do one thing let's just quick do do this as as along because this is important to do so uh, we'll we'll come back what does this model deployer means and then we'll register okay so i'll just customer and the over here as well as customer Let's just copy it so that it makes sense and it will set the deployer so it will just set this like something like this okay fair enough so it says that unable to register the stack name full stack so again it is saying the mlflow stack name is registered because i've already used it in the past so what i'll do i'll sim simply make it customer customer yeah i just quickly do it and then just wait for a few seconds. So most probably it's done. So now you have the MLflow. So when you do ZenML stack describe now. So once you do it, you most probably see your stack over there. So which is default, which is and now your model deploys is MLflow customer and expand tracker is MLflow tracker. So we, we have done this. So let's now run the pipeline and then let's see what is what what, what this leads to. Run pipeline.py and let's just wait for a few seconds to do to complete the run of it. So it is initiating a new run and it is saying something really happens. You're using unsupported version if you encounter errors, blah, blah, blah. You just have to downgrade or something, upgrade MLflow or whatever it is giving. You would totally choose to ignore this. But there is something interesting comes in as we say it, that there's something interesting comes in. So we might need to um, maybe most probably my case says that maybe just search it quickly because i'm not sure what this error means i'm so sorry for it what is this given no okay uh -huh. okay so score well, maybe let's just go and upgrade it what do you think so it says the warning and let's the warning says that Try upgrading and downgrading the scale learn version to a supported version or try upgrading your ML flow. Okay, so pip install, pip install, scikit, okay, upgrade, scikit learn. Okay, it's done. And then what I can do, I can just quickly go and then serve it over here. Which is pip install upgrade ML flow. Okay, so we, we might need to upgrade a little bit version of ML flow. And let's see if this if the error still persists. If it persists, I'll just see the one under the solution which I have in my mind. So most probably your most errors in ML Ops is being fixed by you know just upgrading, reinstalling, you know, disconnecting, then connecting, even restarting your laptop fixes the errors. Because sometimes you don't know what is happening behind the back. So you actually have to be very careful while initiating stuffs. Please. Okay, so that, that was a very simple error. We might have to, you know, <laughs> So we might have to, you know, upgrade then it run completely fine. Okay, cool. That's nice. So let's, let's just quickly click, click go and search default, login, pipelines, this one, this one. And here we go. So if you go and see the configuration, you have the experiment tracker as well. You might think two things as of now. The first thing which you, which you, which you might be thinking that, hey, I use, how, where can I find my um where can i find my you know uh, most probably my ex uh, tracking uri you know how can i view the ml flow stuff 
in, in my own stuffs, right? So let's, I'll tell you two things, okay? The first thing which I'll tell you that how you can track the URI and stuff, like how you can view the experiments. So let, let's quick quickly go and search, search about uh, how you can track the URI, right? So let's just quickly go tracking. There was a, I'm just trying to search one thing, which was they had given a very nice code actually, you know. Okay, we, we got it, we, we got it. Okay, so what you have to do, you have to just go quickly over there and then just go quick quickly over there and in your run pipeline, go over there and just paste this. Okay, just paste this because you will get your URI. Wait for a few seconds, let it run. We have initiated our cached, so it'll just use the cached version of everything. Okay, cool. So it says that your file is available over here, maybe? Yeah, it makes sense. Okay, cool. So um, so your file is available over there. Now what, now what we will do, we'll just run mlflow ui backend so something like this i'll show you which is which you can find on official you know xenml page as well mlflow uri and then you paste the uri which you got by pasting that code which is ml runs right let's just do it okay there might be some error Okay, let, let's just quick, quickly run it, you know, it's something very important to run. I guess it will give some sort of error. I'm not exactly sure. Okay, got an expected argument, which is maybe we have to make it in like this. Mm, file and at last as well. Let, let's just see if it works or not. If it works, then it's fine. Yeah, it works. So let's just go and paste it over there and expect it to run. So this is three, three minutes ago. You just go over there. You see the matrix, which is listed out here, right? You see the parameters. You see the model, which is literally logged in ML model, right? You can use this model to make predictions, make ML flow to make predictions or even pandas to make predictions. You see how interesting this is. This is pretty, pretty amazing. This is just logged each and everything. So I, that's what I wanted to showcase to you. Uh, I hope it makes sense to you. Now what I'll do, I'll just cancel it up. You can just, I, all these commands are available, you know, don't need to worry about it. Cool. So now we are done with the experiment tracker. In the next video, we'll just go ahead and then worry about something known as um, deployment of our model. I hope that will also sound well to you. I'll catch up in the next. everyone welcome back to this video in this video what exactly i'm going to do i'm going to actually cover the last of the last thing which is deployment pipeline so we'll use the mlflow deployer to actually deploy our model locally so that you can use it uh, and and make predictions right and we'll see how to actually deploy our model uh, you might have seen that you just save the model use some fast API applications low load with job lib and then you do it that's really not true which happens in a production use case you actually use something known as mlflow deployment or cell and deployment pipelines stuff to do it so what I'm going to do, I'm going to actually use something known as uh, some something really known as uh, MLflow deployment, which is entirely used for a local deployment, mostly used for local deployment for deployment on AWS or, you know, GC Cloud. You might have to use Selden Core because that's much more advanced deployment software. But as of now, let's just go with MLflow deployment software or sorry, uh, tool uh, to get started with it. So the first thing which I'll do, I'll go ahead and create something known as 
uh deployment pipeline okay a deployment pipe a deployment pipeline so let's let's just quick quickly go and uh, make a deployment pipeline so what i'll do i'll just go ahead and then create a deployment pipeline okay so over here i'll just close it down to looks good okay so run deployment run deployment dot by right let, let's just go there and then just first of all remove all of this because i you know the reason why i like to remove all of this because i think that gives me much more pleasure if i remove all of this because that seems like okay fair enough you have something uh off the load that's why i really really like this stuff okay cool so let's just go to the run deployment and then and run deployment what i'll do so basically you might have already used a uh, click over there right so so basically we'll create two pipelines we'll create two pipelines the pipeline which we'll do so let's first of all create the pipeline as well which is deployment pipeline deployment uh pipeline dot pi so in that deployment pipeline dot pi we'll make two pipelines which is continuous deployment pipeline i'll explain you what this continuous deployment pipeline means as well as inference pipeline later on. we'll explain what does it mean as of now let, let, let's just go in quickly as, as of now assume that con con continuous pi pipeline is like a traditional pipeline which we have built prior so let's just go from pipelines dot de deployment pipeline we'll be we're going to import some certain things so as of now let, let's just go with this which is a deployment pipeline and inference pipeline okay so inference pipeline okay and then what i'll do i'll simply go ahead and create some do do one thing is i'm going to use click okay i'm i'm going to use click so that we can just state in a command that okay we're going to deploy or we're going to predict or whatsoever so i'll just go ahead and then create a click command which is click dot command and click option click option would be click option would be uh so let me just quickly copy it because that's something is easy rather rather than i write whole set of thing so let me just copy it over here okay so click command is config right config and then it will say okay when config what do you want to choose you want to choose deploy or you want to choose predict or you want to choose deploy predict so let me just quickly write over here deploy predict and deploy and predict okay so you can actually state in like this python run deployment pipe run, run deployment dot pi dot slash uh, sorry uh dash dash config and then you want to deploy or predict you can simply write it over there and then you have minimum accuracy will come the come come to what this minimum accuracy means in some time so uh then what then what i'll do i'll create something known as this which is run deployment and that config is str and minimum accuracy is of course number will will come to what this minimum accuracy means uh okay so we'll just go ahead and write float okay and over here what i'll do if it says deploy if it says deploy what i'll do i'll run the dip deployment pipeline and if it says predict i'll run the inference pipeline i'll run the inference pipeline okay um so let's just quickly get started uh, with it so now now you might be thinking hey is it done no of course not we have to actually build this deployment pipeline as well as the inference pipeline explain you what this minimum accuracy means so let's just go over, over there and quick, quickly create our deployment pipeline right away so i'll just import import numpy as np import pandas as pd uh, from xenml import pipelines comma step and then from uh, let's let's quickly import all of this from xenml.config. Uh, you'll see where where we'll use this Docker settings, Docker settings, xenml.config, right? That's correct. Okay. So and then what I'll do, I will just import some something which is MLflow deployer. So I'll I'll just copy and paste all of this thing so that it's much more easy as of now you can just forget it what does it mean and stuff we'll we'll come back to this later on so let me let me just quickly go and just copy and paste it over here so we have imported from general const con constants we'll actually make use of all of this please don't worry about it we all, we have also imported our uh, steps from the steps which is clean data in that clean data we have imported clean df so let's let let's just go and import clean df then you have evaluation in evaluation you have evaluate model so let's just go and write evaluate model ingest data you have ingest df so let's just go and import that as well 
and in model train you have train model which is already there okay so now what now what we'll do i'll just uh, first of all uh, so basically i want to train the model right i'm uh, sorry i want to deploy the model as well as if the model is good in accuracy we'll deploy it okay so let's and also we'll also create the docker setting so docker setting is like what are the libraries or the tools which we need over here so in docker setting the required integrations which is the the, the required integrations which we have integrations which is equals to uh only ml flow right so we we have we want to use only ml flow library into this okay now what i'll do i'll create something known as uh, I, I want to actually use the model you know i want to use the model to uh, to actually deploy the uh, to actually make the predictions but before that I'll, I'll create the basic pipeline which is a continuous deployment pipeline so i'll explain you what this continuous deployment pi pipeline means so let's just go first of all so pipeline comma we have to enable cache equals to true we want to enable the caching and then settings is equals to which is docker first of all so we'll use docker settings right it's docker settings and then that's it that's that's pretty much it so we'll create a deployment pipeline so continuous i guess the spelling is correct continuous deployment pipeline and then over there we'll have min first of all minimum macros we'll, we'll come to that what does minimum accuracy means uh then then after that um we'll have workers number of workers which we need and then we have timeout so timeout means how much like what what will the required amount of time if it is in loop then at how at how much time we should stop the run right so when the timeout should be there so so that's why we have imported this default service start which is from constant we have imported this default default service start stop time timeout so that we can actually stop the pipeline if it is taking too much okay so first of all let's just quick quickly go in and then just run the ingest ef we have actually imported over there and then we have x train so let's just quick quickly go over uh training pipeline and in training pipeline let, let's just import everything out okay cool so let's i've imported everything which is we have the r2 score as well right so now um so you have the r2 score now what i'll do i'll create um uh, what do you say the deployment uh the, the deployment which is the deployment decision okay so now now we have once we have the rmse now we have the trained model so now what we have to do we have to actually deploy the model so there should be some criteria for deploying our models what is that criteria criteria can be if your model is great if your model uh, accuracy is greater than the minimum accuracy which which is required to de deploy the model then only deploy the model that's where your minimum accuracy comes in place so let's let's just quickly go and create something known as deployment trigger okay so the deployment decision will depend on this deployment trigger so first of all let's create a step called deployment decision okay so um so let's just quick quickly go over there so i'll create a class and the class will have doc uh, sorry deployment trigger config in that we have the base parameters right base parameters and then the minimum accuracy the, the minimum accuracy of it will will we'll change it don't worry we'll change it as of now i'm just adding a random number we'll create a step and the step will say is a define define deployment trigger trigger and that trigger first of all the accuracy uh which will be a float and config and the config from where we are using that the config so basically we need a config right so we need a config dot deployment trigger and so you have it's simple so basically what does it does so let, let me just write it implements a simple model deployment trigger that looks at the at the input model accuracy and decides if it is good enough to deploy or not okay so this is a very basic de deployment trigger it says first of all it will return 
the accuracy greater than or equals to config dot app. So basically, so basically we'll we'll make use of the deployment out here. So basically, I'll I'll tell you what is it. so the, the, the we'll create a deployment decision, deployment decision, and deployment decision will contain the, de the deployment trigger. And let's use as of now RMSE rather than R two score. So if you, if you don't know about R two score, you can just go online and search about it. Like it's base, it's it's like it 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 indicates like whether whether it's a goodness of it or not. Okay, then then when you actually actually use it right so let's just go with something known as um mse or rmse right or maybe let maybe let, let's go to r2 score because that's more good okay so now we have the deployment decision now so what it does it takes the r2 score and then it takes the which is the minimum accuracy which is required minimum r2 score which is 0 0.992 it only deploys this particular model if and only if, if the deployment deployment decision true, how does it evaluate? First, it checks that your R2 score is greater than this or not. If it is, then only it deploys the model. Then it will go to the next step. The next step is MLflow model deployer step. So what is MLflow model deployer step? So let's, I'll, I'll show you what does it mean? MLflow model deployer step which is over here. So we actually import from Xenable integration sample for steps. We actually use this MLflow model deploy steps, which actually is that we as already pre-built step. We can actually use that to deploy our model. So the, we'll have to give certain parameters. So what is the model? What is the deployment decision? Is the deployment decision workers, which we need? So workers is equals to workers. Timeout is equals to timeout. Okay. Cool. So now we have the deployment pipeline done. Now we can actually use this for inference. So our, for, for uh, running our deployment pipeline. Okay. Now, um, so now I think we are mostly done with it, right? So let's just quickly go and run our deployment, continuous deployment pipeline. That's much more good to get started off with. And then we'll come back to uh, building up our inference pipeline. So let's just quickly go to run deployment pipeline over there. And... Uh, uh, yeah, so let's just quickly go over there and uh, now what I'll do, I will simply, this is the config which we have, right? And this is the minimum accuracy which is required for us to deploy our model. So we'll create something something known as MLflow model deployer component. So this component will, will be like MLflow deployer. So let me just quickly go ahead and then import with that and each and every libraries which we need. <laughs> technically yes so let's just import the libraries which was required i'll just paste it from my repository okay so basically we'll actually use the first one which is ml for deployer which is ml for deployer component and then this will ml for deploy dot get active model deployer this will take the active model deployer out there and then deploy is equals to config is equals to deploy uh deploy or confis config is to deploy this okay so if the deploy is this or this it will run the deploy if the predict is this or this it will run the predict cool so let me just quickly import my from pipelines import continuous continuous deployment pipeline the continuous deployment pipeline will be the following so let's just take that and then continuous deployment pipeline that deployment pipeline will contain the minimum accuracy which is required and then after that it will have following workers which with let's may name it as a three and timeout maybe 60 seconds okay so this is our uh, de continuous deployment pipeline so now what what we can do we can actually you know um use it so let's quickly let's let me let me just copy it from the uh, repository so now we will have the will make the predict one very soon but but let's just write it out so, so we can say that you can run your so this is the thing which you which i've copied from um zenml repos ml for repository so it says you can run your ml for ui it takes the so so you can see the visual representation of your models right and then what it's then then what it does it fetches and then we have to fetch the existing services with the same pipeline step name and model name right so that we can say that if there is any existing services are there so i've just copied it from their uh, own mlflow examples repository because these are mostly same so basically we are fetching these ex existing services if it is running if there's an existing services running or not right 
and then we have employee deployer step and then model which is the model name if the existing services are there then then we say that the existing services is running locally as a domain to stop the service it will like this and if the service is failed then it says the ml for service is failed or you just say there's no ml for prediction server is running right so this just use the deploy model to get started with so this is a very basic run deployment um as we don't have the inference pipeline so we don't need to worry too much about uh, so let's just quickly go and run this pipeline up right and then we are and then we are mostly done so let's run this pipeline and we have the minimum accuracy right so then we don't need to really worry about stuff okay cool so let's go and run python run deployment uh, config and in that config i'm going to deploy the model let's see if it gives any error if it gives then we'll solve it right away so it says that materializer is not found like material there's no module named must materializer where in, de in deployment pipeline so are we using the materializer i guess yeah okay let's remove this one we are not using it so you don't need to worry about it just go ahead let's solve the error with shit is going to give okay it says that invalid settings can either refer to this 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 invalid setting docker settings settings can be either refer to the general settings or stack component so there, there might be some error interesting error so let let's see first of all where it is giving error okay it is giving in deployment pipeline and in deployment pipeline what is it giving it's that's that's why i say that most of our time will go into this only just by solving these pretty errors so where it is bro okay fair enough so we actually have to write settings to be docker not docker settings <laughs> right and uh, mostly we are done okay fair enough okay cool let's run it now it can be available keys are either resources or docker so we need to have the docker one over there rather than docker settings okay fair enough so it gives the main so why it gives the main so we have run deployment rather than main so let's run that sorry for that let's wait please run whoops so it says config so basically yeah, there is some naming error i'm so sorry for that again no problem you know these things you know very silly errors which i do you know this rectifies us i really want a tool that rectifies us all of this naming errors or you know import errors and all the stuff okay it says that wrong arguments ml for deployer got an unexpected argument called deployment decision what is it so where does it gets an error it gets in done deployment and then it says okay fair enough so it says in con con continuous in that continuous you have the ml flow deployment decision and then it says that okay fair enough so let's let me just quick quickly go okay so basically it's uh, actually not deployment decision it's a deploy decision not deployment decision okay <laughs> okay cool so let's just run wait i hope it works deployment decision is not defined so why did it okay fair enough again i did the big mistake it should be over here not there <laughs> i'm so sorry for it for these mistakes because this is this is something you know when when, when things are super occupied when you know things out there these mistakes happens so it initiates the new run it says missing entry point input data path so let's input our data path where to input the data path okay I'll, I'll 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 add it over here only because i guess that's more important right or let's do one thing let's write over here only data path str and then let's just go over there and then also add the data path let's copy it from directly over here I just quickly replace it okay i hope it works now if it does not then we again have to fix something 
inference is still left so stay tuned for inference and mostly will be done by then missing entry point data path why where it is getting i guess okay 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 again we made a good error so we have to actually put the data, data, data path to be data path sorry sorry for that these little little errors keeps keeps on happening so you have to actually debug it and see where the error where your code is running and stuff it is using the cached version again i'm saying it's like it a deployer okay so it says that an mlflow model with the name was not logged in the current pipeline and no running mlflow server was found please ensure that the pipeline includes a step with the mlflow experiment to configure that trains a model and locks it to that so most probably what i feel that we have to make it false right and then let's run it now if it does not then you know then then we then then we'll get in a big trouble now if it does not deploy the model We are going to get in big trouble if it is not. <laughs> Please. Let's wait. You know, this is something where I just pray, you know, that it works out. <laughs> because this is a step where you get most of the errors. And if some unknown error happens, then just you have to actually spend your ton of time in it. Ton of people has to spend your time in it, you know. Uh, because it's not a very simple thing. Actually go inside your system and see if it works or not. Now see what is happening. It says no materializer is registered for type linear regression, so default pickle materializer was used. It's not production easy, so not we can blah blah blah. So basically, we have to actually make a materializer. I'll show you how to make it later on. I'm just waiting for it to deploy our model. MLflow model deploy step. And if it is there, and if it goes above, service daemon is not running okay something really happened now so it says the fail to start the mlflow deployment service model serving mlflow uh-huh okay for more information on the status please see the logging file okay something really interesting happened so basically timed out happened over there <laughs> okay let's just go and see if what we can do in this case so what we can do is fail to start the service mlflow deployment service daemon is not running okay so zenml up zenml stack describe is there anything which we did wrong? In the deploy, we have the following. Why it is giving the worst error? Okay, fair enough. So something is really interesting ha happening over here. We actually have to run deployment. Okay, let's try to run it. If we see it, it like this.
this might be causing some problem this this warning okay 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 skipping model deployment because the model quality does not match the criteria so again it will say the same thing so basically what's really happening that it is not matching the criteria so let's let's write 0.5 this is that skipping model because the model quality does, does not match the criteria using last to several deployed by step and continuous for model. So I guess that's that wasn't like it, it was not meeting the criteria. Maybe that's why. Yeah. So let's try to I have reduced my minimum accuracy or oh, maybe I have not. So minimum accuracy 0 0.5. let's wait now we just we can do just one thing just wait for it and see if it works so basically i'll tell you what happens is in these type of cases you have to actually st concentrate more you know you have to see actually what's going wrong what might go wrong even the smallest thing even restarting your laptop really works i've literally seen a i was solving an error for two days and i saw okay fair enough like i just restarted the laptop and it works like a charm so yeah so just 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 wait for a few seconds and let's see if it works or not the De deployment trigger started ml flow deployment service skipping model because the model does not meet the criteria my goodness so it's a really interesting things are happening out here right so uh what i'll do i'll just quickly go over through the code and let's see if it works and let's see if this let let it work right and then we'll just go and see if what happens over there okay so we have the deployment existing services and uh okay so it will of course not work because this does not take too much of time right so i'll just you know go ahead and then see if it works on your side ml4 deployment service and uh, okay and then you just go into deployment pipeline in that deployment pipeline you have the get data for mlflow deployment service parameter steps service demo is not working fair enough I, I i get the words the error is about i get it what's the error is about step parameters if your accuracy is greater than config dot minimum accuracy and your minimum accuracy is this one 0 0.5 okay fair and then you have the ml flow model load step parameters so basically we have the pipeline step name running okay so let's just copy this ml flow deployment loader steps as well So what it does, it helps you to get the get all the stuff, which is ML for deployment. And then we have the prediction service loader and predictor, which will come to in some details. You know, I've already written this these code out actually. Right. So let's just go and then just, you know. Okay, fair enough. So I'll try to I'll try to run one more time, maybe, right? So I'll try to run one more time and then see if it works. But before that, what I'll do, I'll just check the everything is working fine on that side which is run deployment and in that run deployment you have the following ml flow deployment services and then you have the to get which is zenimal dot model deploys ml flow model deploy do we have the ml flow model deploy okay we have the get tracking uri and then okay fair enough so i'll just run it try it nicely again okay let's see if it works or not if it does not then we actually have to go inside and talk to zenimal team and then see if it works because you know we have to actually have the continuous talks with the zenml you know because because it's something you know uh, some something which should be which maybe have which may be a bit common in their side and which may have they may have solution to it or we may have to open the github issues and then may most probably will have the errors solved because this is how we solve it it's just we we are not expert in this we just go to some people and then talk to them about it right we'll try we'll try one one more solution which is this one we'll try to this solution which is the lin, lin, linear regression model 
Okay, fair enough. Again, it does, does, does not matches the deployment criteria. So I want to see the R2 score. R2 score is so bad, bro. Okay, fair. That's why it was not given. Okay, okay, okay. So I guess R2 score is very bad. That's why it is not giving good errors. So I'll just add zero. Maybe this 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 might run. Zero means like which I, I want to just showcase you that, that it deploys the model. Right. So now I'll go and run it. R2 score is zero, right? So of course it uh, the R2 score is greater than that. So yeah. Why it is zero, bro? Something really interesting case is happening up there with me. Really interesting. <laughs> okay, cool. So it's wait and also we'll fix that um which is this one we'll fix that if these things does not work well please run bro run no materializer is registered that that is that that that, that is common MSO deployer. updating an existing MSO deployment service which is this one and let's see if it, this works if it does not which is like it met the criteria now it met the criteria now let's see what it does it should work you know but if it does not we'll come back and then see what it works or not okay let's see if it works or not updating an existing ml flow deployment service at this 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 stage i think it will mostly not work <laughs> because this does not takes this much time it will say that a daemon is not working blah 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 we might need to do something we'll try one one more solution which i have in my mind Okay, service daemon is not running. Uh, for more information, please see the following log file. So I'll just check it out and then come back very soon. So everyone, there was a very simple error. <laughs> so basically, uh, my I've all, all, already tried this ML flow on a couple of environments. That's why it was like service that we have the current service running. We cannot uh, actually use that. So what I done, I actually deleted that. Uh, then I, you, if you were working on a new, then new, uh, you might be working on new stuff, right? You might be working on new stack, right? So we have to actually use the new stack. That's why it, it was giving me error. Now it is working to totally fine. The only thing which is not working fine is the following. So let's just go and uh, fix that thing. So basically what, what we need to do, we need to import something as cast. And let, let me go and just import that from typing import cast. From typing import cast. Okay, fair enough. So we'll just run it. Deploy and then let's just see if it works you can totally choose to ignore the warnings and stuff uh, or you can just go and solve that thing if you want so it ingests the data first after it is ingesting the data it cleans the data data cleaning is completed it goes to the next step which is trains the model it trains the model then gives some sort of warning so you can totally choose to ignore this or maybe see if it works it model training is completed, train model is finished, and it gives some, you know, root squares and then deployment trigger has started, deployment MLflow model step has started, it up updates an existing MLflow de deployment services, right? It starts with the MLflow deployment services and most later starts, right? So it starts the service, so let's just go and then see if it works. Hopefully it should work, if it does not, then I'll just, you know, kick his ass off okay i'm so sorry for that okay so now your model is available you can make the prediction make your prediction over here because it is already already running you can also delete the model if you want so now your model is successfully deployed so now we need to do we need to actually make predictions from this model so i'll what i'll do i'll quickly go ahead and then create something known as um i'm so sorry for it go to deployment pipeline in that deployment pipeline, first of all, we have this MSO deployment load, loader step, which will help us to load that model. Okay, and then let's go and then start doing stuffs. So uh, we'll just go ahead and then create something as 
define prediction service loader right so i'll just copy and paste the code if you want but yeah but okay it's like i've already this is already pre-written okay so let's just go and then write the uh, prediction service loader so we'll create a step where we'll enable the caching equals to false because sometimes caching is also not very good then we'll create the prediction service service loader and in that we'll have the pipeline name pipeline name will be str pipeline step name pipeline step name will be also also str is it running bool equals to true and then model name to be model okay and then it returns what it returns it returns ml flow deployment service okay it returns the amazon deployment service so basically it gets the prediction service started by it it gets the prediction service over here so just copy and paste it yeah so it gets the prediction service started by the deployment it takes the, all of these arguments in it so first of all get the ml for deployer stack component so basically we'll get the ml flow deployer stack component so which is very simple get active model deployer over here and then what i'll do i'll existing fetch existing services with the same pipeline name and model name so what i'll do i'll go existing services which is mlflow mlflow deployer which is mlflow model deployer component dot find model server and in that we actually have pipe pipeline name to a pipeline name pipe, 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 pipe pipeline step name model name and running right so if it is running 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 to be running that's it that's pretty much it so if not existing services then we say we, we raise the runtime error and in that runtime error we say that no mlflow services is found which is like this it's no step in this pipeline and something like this you know pipeline for the model name is not deployed so i just copy and paste the errors which is so traditional errors found from the, you can just just go at you know xenable examples and then just copy and paste this it's not a big thing then you print the existing services or maybe it's not required then 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 you return what do you return you know you return existing services zero so you return the services by using so it is actually prediction service loader it loads the uh, current prediction service so to actually use this for model predictions now what i'll do i'll create the predictor so i'll create the predictor the predictor will have this service that service would be the ml flow deployment service type of that and then it then then, then it takes the np dot and the array right and it returns those array of predictions and we don't array so what is error of pred array of predictions so we'll first of all create a step over here as well that step will be of dynamic data importer so that will create the step of enable cache equals false then we'll create a dynamic importer that returns str that returns uh, a string right so it downloads the data from the first of all downloads the data from a mock api or maybe just 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 go ahead and create data is equals to get data for test and it on data so we have to actually build this quickly so let's just go and quick quickly build this which is utils utils.py let's go there and run it so we'll just have import logging import pandas spd from source dot model sorry data cleaning import data cleaning and data process strategy pre-process strategy and then we'll just use this bunch get data for test where we first of all get the data for the test and then we want the 101 we actually clean the data we drop the review score we convert it into the json format that's why it is the it, it is returning str okay now what i'll do i'll simply go ahead and uh, make this so let's just go and quick quickly make this so i've already made this let me just copy and paste that because this is pretty simple to understand 
Okay, so first of all, it starts the service um, and then it loads the data. It removes some of the column data for the columns which we want from the data. We create, we convert in the pandas data frame, we convert in the list, and then we finally convert that JSON list to a NumPy array. And then we make the prediction from that service. Okay. I hope it makes sense now. <laughs> okay, fair enough. So let's just go and run it now. So we are mostly done. Now what? Now we have the prediction service loader. Now at last we'll create the inference pipeline. So that inference pipeline will have, okay, sorry, pipeline will enable the cache, will settings the Docker. Then, then I'll create the inference pipeline. That inference pipeline will contain the pipeline name, which we want and the pipeline step name, right? Which is str. So it first of all uses the dynamic importer, dynamic importer, right? And then it's service, which is a prediction service loader. It gives the pipeline and running equals to false. Let's just write running equals to false as of now. And the new prediction, prediction should be predictor is this is service equals to service and then data like this. And then we mostly done. Okay. So we have the data over there and then we have the service over there. Now we give the service, it uses that service from the from this and then make predictions on this data using predictor, right? Which is like predictor you might have seen over here. Okay, cool. So now we are, we are mostly done. Let's just go to run deployment and then run the pipelines. So let's just go to run deployment and then we'll just import our inference pipeline out there. So I'll just go and then import inference pipeline. And once we import the inference pipeline, we'll just go ahead and uh, run our inference pipeline. So yeah, the pipeline, the pipeline name should be continuous deployment pipeline, right? And then your pipeline step name, which is ML for deployer step. I guess it should work now. Most probably. Okay, so now we have done that. So let's just run the predict. It's so tiring. Please fix this error. I want you all to fix this error. This is very basic. You just have to write Xanimal downgrade. Fair enough. So we get the error. Nice, nice, nice. That that is expected. From dot urls import get data for test. I'm very happy that uh, that you. So one thing which I'll tell you that it is very likely that you sometimes don't understand it. Right, because this is something very conceptual, very technical things out there. So I want you to be very strategic in understanding stuffs. Right. So please be if you if you're not able to understand it, that's totally all right. So it says that data process strategy is not there. Okay. Pre-process strategy is not defined. What does it mean? Name data pre-process strategy. Mm -hmm. If it doesn't, if it again gives the error, we have to worry about it. There's something really interesting. What happened? I really hope that it does not give the error now. Yahoo. Okay. So built-in materializer can only write unable to handle class numpy and the array. Uh, built-in materializer can only handle the artifacts of the following. So it gives some error. Let, let's just go and fix this up. This is so tiring. Um, okay. Let's go to where built-in in the predictor. Okay. There is predictor in deployment. It gives in predictor numpy and the array. P dot and the array. Sorry, this was str by numpy array. So basically, the the data which you're getting is str, not numpy and the array. If it works, if it is not, then we have to worry about now. Uh, 
okay json is not defined import json anything else please give me the error fast bro I'm, I'm i'm so worried about errors fix this up so just say just say it's animal down downgrade it, it should fix please yeah so we are done so now we actually completed our stuff right so let's just go over here enjoy so you have the dynamic importer prediction service loader dynamic import outputs and then prediction service loader out output something which is a service and then this uses output and output output of the which is the data for test and this first service and then uses both of them to make the predictor and this actually the predictor outputs the following so if you go and see the visualization you see something really interesting that your predictions has been made over there so i guess this is not showing any wish visualization because of some mind error so you see that your mean is a standard deviation of predictions is this right so actually it made the predictions out there okay i hope it makes sense now we have deployed the model made the predictions too now you might be thinking here is how can i make the single handle had single handle predictions right so we are done with the deployment and inference as well now it is actually making good uh and in inference out there it is actually predicting but it might happen that you're still confused so let's just not have too much of con confusion in your head and then fix that confusion too so i have actually made a um, simple streamlet dot send it app dot by appy okay paste it right right i hope it works mostly so you from the deployment pipeline it imports the prediction service loader and then run deployment from run deployment it imports let's make it main rather than run right main and then over here as main okay so everything is same the only thing which is if the person clicks the predict button it will go to the s prediction service gives this and then it says that if the post service is there then creates the data frame that's the same step which which, which we have done in predictor and predict from the data right so let's run the streamlet run streamlet app.py please run Fair enough. High level overview is not there. So I'll just make sure that I remove all the images. Okay. Any images? Mm -hmm. Okay. Let's run it now. Let's wait. Is it, it is running? Cool. So I just make it zero zero everything. So it's now it giving prediction. So basically your detail is four point two two. So basically it is actually using the prediction from the model. So you see that you haven't even saved a model. Saved saved the model is not there. It's actually using it. It's actually the pipelines over there. I, if you go and see the pipelines of ours, so let's go to pipelines and then let's go to continuous deployment pipeline. The continuous deployment pipeline you have the following inference pipeline which is done right. And then let's go behind back okay let's just go to continuous deployment continuous deployment continuous deployment and in that continuous deployment you see the continuous deployment is also there right so whole pipe pipeline is done so we are done with one project right i hope it was really good project for you uh, i understand it cool so let's just go ahead and then that's it that's the wrap of the project in the next project we'll actually use something known as customer churn or maybe let's cover the next project up i'll catch up later Bye bye